August 24 at the Met, Draco Boxing and RDR Promotions present Brave Hearts, Knocking Out Violence, Volume 1. Join guest ring announcer, Gilly the King and guest commentator, Wallow, for the biggest boxing event to hit Philadelphia in years. Tickets are available at Draco. Yo, yo, what's the deal? It's your boy Norbert, and this is the 10 A Podcast, and we are live. I'm going to open up the callers line just in case anybody wants to call up and debate this. 470-3266-329. Uh, boxing is, is definitely uh, getting more interesting, especially Javante Davis's tweets, even his trainers, uh, anybody that's associated with boxing. There's a lot of stuff going on, and, and it's making it entertaining. Uh, thank God we're getting back to some other things. But, but recently. Ever seen a military. Oh, sorry about that. Recently, Gervonta Davis's trainer came out and stated, this is what he stated, that he, that Gervonta Davis, he called out uh, Floyd Mayweather and stated that um, Floyd, I mean, uh, Tank, would not only defeat, um, what's his face, uh, Floyd Mayweather, but he would figure out the shoulder roll and, and pretty much, you know, knock, knock him out and beat him. And, and I, it, to me, I, I mean, I'm seeing some of the stories, uh, there was a traction right now, but it's absolutely amazing to actually see this. And I actually have my guy on there, the pack buster. And he thinks I'm absolutely, he thinks people are absolutely crazy for even thinking about that. So Javante trainers uh, calls out Floyd Mayweather. Javante can decode the shoulder roll. If Floyd can fight another exhibition, he can fight another fight. If he's as great as he says he is, Javante versus Floyd. Now, this will be a huge money fight. All right. Of course, Floyd would be the, the A side in this situation. But this, and I'm just saying, in, in, um, in a perfect world, this would be a huge fight. I'm talking about crazy. Uh, Javante is beloved. The beef is real. They keep going back and forth. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's just one of those things. And, and you know, we, we like to um, have these fantasy matchups. Having said that, I had my guy on, my guy Troy. You all know him. He's very, very emotional cat. He's very, uh, you know, doesn't believe that if you are a uh, – that you should speak on boxing if you never box, which, okay, I guess that's his point, whatever. He believes that Floyd Mayweather would defeat Gervonta Davis in emphatic fashion. At the age of 45, uh, with Tank pretty much going into his prime today, being, I think, 29 or 30 years old, whatever it is, would defeat him. Uh, I mean, a top-level fighter. Now, of course, this fight would have to uh, happen at a catch weight of probably about 145, which I don't think Javante has ever fought at. And Floyd is the bigger guy. But at the end of the day, I just believe age is, is something that's undefeated. Age and inactivity to me is something you got to deal with, right? And um, listen, as great as Floyd was, look to the, towards the end of his career, the last couple of years of his career, he did not really fight anybody worth mentioning. Uh, and that's just being honest. It, it, it's just being honest. You're talking about fight McGregor. Um, he didn't fight the top guys at the end. You know what I mean? And continues. What's up, third degree? And then continued to fight at a level. I mean, uh, you know, just exhibitions. John Gotti Jr., some Asian dude in 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 in, uh, in Japan or something like that. And then you. I mean, it is what it is, but. This is this was Troy's point, which I get. He said George Foreman came back at, at, a, at a later age and became champion. I mean that that is true. Took a couple bumps on uh, bumps on the road, but eventually did become champion after a few fights. Now this is a tall task to ask somebody, even if you consider Floyd to be the greatest fighter of all time, which many do. Okay, you're asking a man to take somebody at the top of his game, a big puncher. Uh, somebody that's that that's very intelligent in the ring and is going to put a pressure on Floyd that Floyd hasn't seen since a Maidana or or, 
or uh, even a Manny Packer or, 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 in, or in his heyday, okay? And you're asking this man to come in here and defeat him. It's a tall task to ask. And I just want to, I just want some expert opinions. I mean, my man says Floyd would come in there and win. Um, it's crazy. Somebody said 45, laughing. I don't know. Floyd isn't George Foreman, top of the morning knows. Hype man, I'm with you. I, I, I'm with you. Listen, the only disadvantage that I see really for Javante Davis um, is, is, is pretty much going into this fight would be the weight. I mean, can Floyd make any anywhere near 147 anymore? Or, or what? Because, for, uh, I mean, Tank is not going to go past 140 something. I, I would, I, if I was to take an educated guess, I would say 145, maybe 143. He doesn't want to go up that high. But the amount of money that he is, he could make, if this fight were to happen, we're talking about possibly in the hundreds of millions of dollars. For the simple fact, this is Floyd Mayweather. People still want to see this man touch the canvas. Other people want to see him continue to be victorious, go up to 51 and 0. And, and, and you know what I mean? So, this is a legit fight if he was to come. Now, is does Floyd want to actually fight legit fighters? Even though Tank is a lot smaller, he still hits like a ton of bricks and has been active at least fights once a year. Um, real competition. Floyd has not fought that in years. And, and, you know, my man says with the skill set that Floyd has, he can come back and do it. Now, do you guys agree uh, what's up, my man Al Money? What's the word? <clears throat> Jermaine says Tank needs to fight the top guys in his own weight class. I, I, I absolutely agree with you, Jermaine. I absolutely agree with you. But Tank is definitely um, making money and is looking for that next big fight, the next big check. And, and that's one of the reasons he was entertaining a rematch with Ryan Garcia. He beat him emphatically and still was interested in the fight because it's a money draw. And, and fighting Floyd Mayweather on a return against Javante with everything that has transpired within the last couple of years between the two, the internet trolling, the disrespect shown from both of them, this would be a mega fight. Now, would it actually be a good fight is the question. Would Floyd be able to come back and fight at a high level against somebody like Javante Tank Davis? Third degree says, I don't think the fight happens as a pro bout. I mean... I hear you, but at the same time, it would be stupid for Javante to accept it as a non-pro fight. And, and I think he wants to blemish um, Floyd's record. I think he believes or has that much disdain for Floyd to, 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 to actually do that. And I think money-wise, I don't think an exhibition would do as well as an actual fight. And if Floyd wants to continue to make history, this would be insane. Now, I don't believe Floyd would actually take the fight, period, because I think Tank is going to go in there and try to take his head off, regardless of if it's an exhibition or not. But Floyd does hold that O to his chest very, very uh, close to it, to his heart. 30 degrees says, but it doesn't do anything for Tank. He'll get discredited for fighting an older retired Floyd. Where's the glory in that? Um... Third degree, this is where we might disagree. I don't really think Tank is thinking of the glory when you're not even fighting the top fighters in your division. I feel like he's taking a lot more safer fights and continuing to rack up checks. And this would be not only a huge payday, but it would be a huge stage to fight somebody of the magnitude of Floyd, who's an iconic figure in boxing globally when it comes to boxing. When you think boxing, you think Floyd Mayweather. This may not, people may say, hey, you fought an older Floyd, whatever. Okay, whatever. But if he gets to blemish Floyd's record and be on that stage where people are going to tune in, right, that they're going to tune in, It's good. This, this, this may sell two, three million pay-per-views. Floyd's return against arguably the baddest man on the planet, I think it would definitely entice Gervonta Davis to actually do this. Now, will it entice Floyd to do it? the risk and all that, I don't know. You know what I mean? But a $100 million fight, it would be very hard for Floyd to turn down. Now, I don't know his financial statuses. 
if he's good on money, I don't know. But it's very hard to pass up on something. We're possibly talking about more than hundred million, possibly a two hundred million dollar fight. He made what was it, a hundred, almost two hundred million or something like that when he fought Manny Pacquiao. So we can't disregard the amount of money and the power of money. Thirty degrees says, "Nah, I wouldn't be stupid. No, it's just a check, a very big one at that, a, ve- a huge one." And if Javante were to let's say knock Floyd Mayweather out, do you understand? where this man would be, uh, how much love and respect this man would get globally, just the eyes on him, it would be insane. Cardell Hone says, damn, you talk about that. <laughs> you just can't. Cardell, I can speak on whatever I want. I just don't give a shit about battle rap. Just, I just want to answer. I don't care. I can talk about it right now. I can talk about whatever I want. And I am going to be doing some interviews um, coming up about it promoting this big event that I got coming up. But, yeah, I don't give a shit about it. Third Degree says, drop that link, knows my fingers hurt. Hold on, Third Degree. I got a guest coming on, but hold on. Oh, hold on. I got I got, I got, got somebody special. Hold on. I want to bring on. Hold on. I got I got to add this, 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 this to my guy real quick. Hold on, give me a second, third degree. True, I hear it. I'm gonna bring. Now, I want to bring on a former athlete, a former professional athlete that competed at the highest levels in in, in sports, right? I want to see if he gets on. I just sent them the um, notice, right? Yeah, hold on one second. Hold on. Isn't Floyd stuck in Dubai? No, I think Floyd's back in the States or someplace outside of America. I don't believe so. But anyways, let, let's just say this fight were to happen. What the hell? This guy got a new email. Hold on, let me send it again. Let me send let me just send this email. Let me see if I can get this this gentleman on. G C I uh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't even know I had this email in here. That's crazy. Uh, hold on. So I, I definitely want people's opinions. You guys can call in once we start getting it going. Um, hold on. What do you say? That you said we got to talk about their style of fighting. I think the X Factor, including Floyd's age, Floyd is short. Two and we'll have to fight on the outside to avoid the knockout punch. Floyd, Floyd is 5'8. Legit 5'8. Javante is a legit 5'5. Five five. Um, it's a, I don't got Zab's number. <laughs> I wish I had Zab's number. I'd love to to bring Zab. I have a lot of respect for him. You got those oh, Zab's on? I didn't know Zab was on. But um I mean it, it, it's intriguing to say the least. If if you're a boxing fan, you know what I mean. And we all seen what Floyd made the weather has done globally. Uh, whether you're Puerto Rican, I mean, whether you're Latino, Black, Asian, European, whatever it is, people know who who this man is. So I definitely believe that that Gervonta's team is definitely interested in making this fight happen, simply because the economic impact of it. Like it, it's 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 something that would be enormous. Like the stage alone would be insane you know what i mean um <laughs> and I, i'm definitely definitely looking forward to it. i'm actually bringing on a pro athlete uh right now a former pro athlete uh actually an nfl athlete now a lot of people say well boxing is not the nfl well uh th- these guys train at a high level they know a lot about their bodies and and, and how long their bodies can last now these guys take a beating things of that nature but there's a lot of questions that I definitely have to ask this individual that to get some clarification. He's a little taller than Tank, not by much. But his arms are longer, so he's he's about a legit three inches taller than Tank. His arms are longer than uh, those, so he can win on the cards for sure if he fights outside and moves constantly. But Tank can cut off that ring really well. Forty five years old, you're asking a man to do a lot to to basically um, be out there, and, and it, it's not. It's not as simple as you're talking about timing. You're talking about muscle memory. 
you're talking about a lot of things, and and Tank is not your typical uh, fighter. Like he 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 does pack a wallop. You know what I mean? Um, Floyd has a good chin. Floyd is a great defender, but again, age is undefeated, and can Floyd take that to the next level? You know, I mean, I feel like it, it, it's a tough sell. But I'll tell you this: I would definitely be interested in watching this fight. Like I would love to see this fight. This is a fight that, to me, um, is is huge. It, it's a huge, huge fight. Um, it'd be the biggest fight in boxing. I, I, I think it would have so, but so many buys. I think Floyd would. I think Floyd would literally get a couple of hundred million off of this fight. You know what I mean? I, what I mean, a tough sell. Uh, I mean, it's a tough sell to Floyd. Um, I think Floyd literally values that O. Oh, shit, Corey. Uh, hold on, let me bring on my man real quick. Corey, what up, bro? Yo, what's good with it, man? How you doing, Nort? I'm, I'm good, man. I'm over here talking about uh, some stuff real quick that I find interesting. But first, I know you have an event coming up, right? Uh, August 24th. Yeah, for sure. And I'll be in the building. You know, you got Gilly and Wallow sure. commentating them two nuts, right? Those two nut ass. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're gonna be going crazy, man. Um, and, and you're in the boxing promoting game. How long you've been in boxing? I've been boxing since I was seven, and I'm 41, so I've been boxing all my life, man, more than 30 years. But uh, as far as promotion goes, this is my first boxing promotion. I was a, a party promoter here in Philly for a minute. But, um, I've teamed up with other promoters that are in the city right now. So, uh, like RDR promotion, shout out to RDR. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this is my first boxing event, but I just wanted to do it like I do everything else, man. Like my first step out, I said it got to be something major. So, uh, we put the resources behind it, and uh, it's, it's this should be one of the biggest boxing events in Philadelphia for quite some time, man. Nah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. You got some guys on there. I would like to see what. Uh, Chris Colbert, if he can bounce back, he's had a rough couple of years. Uh, yeah, Randy Twins. So I'm definitely uh, looking forward to. It, but you're 41 years old. You've been boxing since you were seven years old, right? Right. right. Um, it recently came out that um, Javante Davis, his uh -huh. uh, his trainer came out and said that he calls out Floyd Mayweather for a fight and says that Javante would be able to uh, solve. The shoulder roll today and and a lot of people uh i think would be interested in seeing that fight now my question to you is this being 41 years old i don't know how long how, how inactive you've been but right. i was telling people like yo being as inactive as floyd has been and people can say oh he's fighting exhibitions fighting right. somebody at the level of tank davis right today and of course it'll be at a catch weight probably 145 or something like that right if floyd right. can actually make that weight I mean, he walks around. He, he he never really gets that much bigger than his walk around weight anyway. Like than his uh, fight weight. So you know, Floyd probably walk around like one sixty, mm -hmm. one sixty five at the biggest. So making one forty seven has never really been that hard for Floyd. But that was his natural weight. Yeah. yeah. Now I know I, I I get that, but <clears throat> my my question is in regards to that fighting somebody pretty much going into their prime or in their prime right now against the inactivity Floyd has, regardless uh, of how great Floyd once was, do you think it's an impossible feat? Because in my opinion, it's not easy to turn it off or turn it on when it comes to being a pro athlete like that. No, that's, that's right. That's true. That's true. Floyd never has really turned it all the way off, though. He's still fighting at exhibitions and doing things like that. Um, if there's somebody that can come back and fight at a high level, uh, after being off for a little while, it would be a guy like Floyd who who knows how to dedicate himself. He doesn't really abuse his body like that, you know, because I, I know some guys like, you know what I mean, that really still, like Steve Cunningham, we do shows together. We do commentary together. He's 46 right now, man. He ain't fought in a minute, but he could fight right now uh, if he wanted to, you know what I mean? But when it comes to timing, knocking some of the rust off, I wouldn't go and fight or Javante if I were Floyd my first fight back, obviously. Mm -hmm. He would need one or two fights just to warm him up. But after that, yeah, I think he could do it. I think he could do it. But the, the question is, <clears throat> should he do it? Money-wise, probably makes sense. But um, as far as the shoulder roll goes, I don't think Javante is wrong when it comes to solving Floyd's defense. 
You know what I mean? I think Floyd can use his mind and kind of like navigate his way to some to a point of victory if, if he were to fight him. But um, that shoulder roll doesn't work against Southpaws. You know what I mean? If you watch any mm. Southpaw that Floyd never fought, when you lean over to your right shoulder, that Southpaw, you put yourself right in line for a Southpaw with a straight left hand, no matter what, mm. every time you do it. So it doesn't really get you to safety when you're fighting a Southpaw. And if you watch Floyd versus Zab, Floyd versus uh, DeMarcus, Chop Chop, Corley, any of the Southpaws that he's faced, uh, even when he fought uh, Pacquiao. You know, he doesn't have that angle advantage from being able to roll. So I think that uh, a guy like Javante, because he only needs one punch, he only needs to hit you one time to finish the fight. Yeah. And you got to ask yourself, can Floyd get through a fight with Javante and not get hit one time by a left hand? I don't think he can. Uh, no, I, I, and that's, I think that's the question. And, and, and again, yeah, he's been active, quote unquote, but you've been active against John Gotti Jr., yeah. I don't know how, like I think people underestimate how serious boxing actually is, and being in there real quick, oh, yeah. and, and even towards the end of his career, you fought guys like McGregor. You didn't fight yeah. the elites, and that that was purposely done because yeah. he didn't. He felt like I believe he felt like he didn't have it the way he once had the reflexes. Like, it, right. and that's just my opinion. Like, you you know, there's no way Floyd is going to have the same reflex. He was getting hit a lot more later on right. in his career. You know what I mean? Right. True. So, so to me, I'm like, and you're right with the southpaw situation, and then going 12 rounds. You're going 12 rounds. He looked tired against uh, Conor McGregor, and so he just turned yeah. it up and knocked him out. You're asking to me a lot of a 45 year old man to fight somebody at, at that elite stage. Now, if he fights just some guy off the street, and you know Floyd's not going to fight two fights before he fights Javante. No, you know, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. So, so you're asking this man to pretty much jump in the ring right now right. to fight pro probably the best closer in boxing today. True. It, it's uh, it's. it's <laughs> I would order, love man. to see it, man. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, I mean that would be the biggest fight in the last 10, 15 years, man. Ten years probably, but it'll be the biggest pay per view selling event. In quite some time, man. Yeah, bigger think, than, that would be bigger than his, him and Conor McGregor's number, him and him and uh, Pacquiao's numbers. He would break records with that. So, I mean, financially and as a fan, like without the without the boxing knowledge and without the analytical, you know, sense, what would I want to see it? Of course, I want to see it. Do I think it'll happen? Probably not because of what you just stated. Like it's, yeah. it just it, it's too much in favor of Javante. The youth is in his favor. Power is in his favor. You know, the momentum in regards to his, his how busy he's been. It's all in his favor. Now that would just make a win or even a competitive match by Floyd even more impactful. You know what I mean? Because I don't think anybody cares that Floyd lost that fight. To be honest with you. So if there's one fight that Floyd could fight and risk losing for the money, it would be this one. You know what I mean? It would be this one. I don't well, think anybody cares if he's lost. I think Floyd would care because that O is very important to Floyd. Whenever you hear him speak, that's what he goes. That's his go-to move I, when he talks I, about I'm, being the greatest. I feel you, but the reason that was before is because as Floyd yeah. came up in age yeah. and started fighting bigger guys, he stopped knocking guys out after like Gotti. After yeah. Gotti, he wasn't really that, you know, he wasn't a killer anymore. He had to be more yeah. strategic, right? Yeah, so the only selling point was people were showing up to watch him lose. So yeah. the O became a marketing point. At this point, after retirement, the O don't matter as much because he's not trying to market that O moving forward into a career. There's no career to move forward into. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I, mean, I know he want, he want I know he want to keep it. But if you offer Floyd, you know, some ridiculous money, like is this a, that's a billion dollar fight, especially if you did it in the uh, in Saudi Arabia. So if you offer Floyd some crazy money for that type of fight, I wouldn't say. I mean, obviously, I don't know if he needs it. I, he might not need it, but he just might do it if the price is right. I'll tell you this right now. There's been rumors Javante's put out there. Floyd doesn't have the bag like he once had. He got stuck in Saudi Arabia for financial problems. I don't yeah. know. Having said all that, I don't know anyone that would turn down a quarter of a million dollars for one night, especially somebody yeah. that calls himself Money May, somebody that just bought, I don't know how many Aston Martins the other day and had to show it to the public. Yeah. I mean, 
Money, money talks, and I believe Floyd can get over a quarter of a million dollars guaranteed for this fight. I, I just believe yeah, that's, that's somebody will pay him. You know, they'll <clears> pay him probably <throat> half a half a billion guaranteed for this fight. How do you he turn down half that. a billion? I don't know. I mean, you had to ask him because when it happens, because he's going to have to do it. Um, what I, what I think is more likely to go with the way things are shaping out. Berto had a, a interesting um, philosophy or, or uh, you know, just anal- not even an analogy, just an di- interesting take on what could happen in the boxing landscape right now. Yeah. And uh, that's Shakur Stevens signing with Floyd and then Floyd pushing him, you know, and that becoming like his his uh, his pawn for his attack on Javante. I think that would be more likely the Floyd getting in there. I don't think Floyd wants to get in there. You know what I, I mean? I don't think he wants to. See, the reason I, I, I don't think that'll work, and for Shakur Stevenson, it's two reasons. One, I think Shakur is definitely the biggest threat to him at 135, right? You think so? I believe so, 100%. At 135, I, I, I think he's the biggest threat. I, I, that's just no. me. At 140, I think Tia Fimo is, to be honest. That's how I feel. I think those are okay. the two guys that are going to be triple fight Okay. I, that's what I'm saying. So I don't think I really don't believe Javante believes the risk is as great as the reward in that situation. Not to mention his disdain for Floyd. As I don't think he wants to work with Floyd. And and you got to mention too, he let go. I think it was um, Leonard Ellerby. That was all about yeah. Floyd. Right. There's a real dislike between the two. So I don't think Shakur should go and sign with Floyd. Simply because he believes he, he he can make that fight happen. Because I don't think I think going with Floyd makes it a little more difficult. You're adding more drama to that situation, and I don't I don't that's, believe that's that that drama happens. drama is drama is what sells today though. So that would be the only way Shakur Stevens gets a big money fight is if he signs with Floyd yeah. and uh, he starts to first off nobody wants to sign him because he's not a, he's not an exciting fighter, but yeah. You know, and he got to pay him crazy money to, to, to sign him, and he's not really bringing it in at the gate. Okay. The only way you build that up, you're not going to build that up with his gloves because he's not knocking guys out. He's not going in there being exciting. Mm-hmm. The only way you can build up a Shakur is with the back end feud that they have right now. So that's why I say when Birdo said it, I said it makes that makes some sense business wise just due to the fact that. When you look at the dynamics between Floyd and Javante, Javante might not want to work with Floyd, but he would love to knock the shit out of anybody that Floyd would break on as their dark horse. But who better than to knock out Floyd? I think that is more attractive than to attempt to do it to Shakur. But if you, if you don't get Floyd in the ring is what my point is. Like yeah, yeah. I think that the chances of you getting Floyd in the ring versus you getting a Shakur managed by a Floyd in the ring, I think you got a better chance there. But uh, as far as what you said earlier, I'm not gonna let you get away with that. You what? said Shakur Stevens is a threat. Yes, Javante. Yes. Oh, I don't know what happened. My man just came off. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'll wait for him to come back on. He just came. Let me put on. I gotta wait for my man to call you to come back. I, I definitely think Shakur is a threat. I, let's be honest. I believe he's a huge threat for Floyd Mayweather. I mean, for Floyd Mayweather for um. Odio's crazy. Yeah, he's he's going in and out. I don't know what's going on. But um, yeah, he's a huge threat for Javante Davis. Oh yeah. Um, hold on, let me see. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just trying to make sure this guy comes back on. But I think he's a huge threat, Shakur Stevens. I mean, who else at 135 do you believe is a big threat right now from I, I think I think it is Shakur. And I, and I at third degree doesn't doesn't agree with me, but Tia Fimo is definitely a huge threat. I think Lomachenko is a threat. Okay. I got Shakur over Loma simply because of Loma's age. It scares me to be that eight, that that up in age. I think Loma is a way better offensive fighter, but he's also a smaller guy than both Shakur and 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 you know, I mean you're talking about somebody that, that pretty much came up from 126, I think, or something like that. I'm not 100 percent sure. But um I definitely think Loma is a threat. I just feel like Shakur's style um, and this age is completely different. And to, to, listen, if you guys dismissing Tia Fimo is absolutely absurd. You're talking about somebody that beat Loma and beat Josh Taylor pretty much convincingly. Uh, let's 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 stop not giving Tia Fimo credit. That guy's a bad son of a, son of a sob right there. Um, 
I'm a big T.O. guy. Hold on one second. Hold on. Let me bring my guy. I don't know. Your audio was a little crazy. I guess it fell off, whatever. But so you're not gonna let me get away with it. I, I, let me let me let me let me rephrase that. I think Lomachenko is also a big somebody guy. call me. My bad. Right, Go ready? ahead. So you don't agree with uh with Shakur being the biggest threat? I, okay, uh, elaborate. When you look at Shakur, right, and and and, and I, you know, I've been boxing my whole life. When I when I look at Shakur, you know, when he's fighting a conventional fighter or fighting a lesser opponent. You know, that's not a southpaw. See, Shakur will fight you, and he will stand in there with you if you're a conventional fighter because he's a southpaw that doesn't have what I call a true defense. And the reason I say this is, is I see it every time I watch southpaws, and, and I can I can point them out. When you watch a southpaw that supposedly is a, de a defensive genius, and their only defensive genius is against conventional fighters, orthodox fighters, it's because the angle advantage is there for them as a southpaw so they feel safe. When you watch guys like a Pernell Whitaker, though, right? Okay. He could he he was a great defender whether he's fighting another southpaw mm -hmm. or whether he's fighting a conventional fighter. I mean, he had the fundamentals of defense down pat, right? Shakur does not. Shakur mm -hmm. is good because he's he's a quick reflex southpaw fighter that's quick on his toes, and he he has an angle and distance advantage against conventional fighters who don't really know how to fight a southpaw. Okay. He's fighting other southpaws when he fought the guy before this last fight. When he fought that guy, he ran all over the ring because he knew yeah. I don't have the angle advantage. And he doesn't really know how to slip a straight left hand the right way. He doesn't know how. So a guy like Gervonta, who has all of the mental IQ, when you watch Gervonta, he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but he's a guy that gives away rounds on purpose because he, he knows I'm going to tire right. you out and I'm going to stop my prey and I'm going to tear your ass up. Shakur can't deal with that from a Javante. So it's either going to be a track race where he runs from, from Javante More or like he tries to fight him, mm -hmm. and that's it. Because Javante is, is a, one of few. Him and Deontay Wilder were the last two in the game today who only need to hit you one time. Okay. They don't need accumulation of punches. Javante just got to find one shot in the fight, and Shakur cannot get through a fight without running. And not get hit with one shot by Javante. There's no way he can do that. So oh. Shakur, and he, and it's not like he could stand there and fight you either. Like if he had to fight you, he doesn't have anything that Javante is afraid of. And if he's running, he's going to he's going to slow down eventually. And uh, you know, and that's going to be it. <clears throat> so I can't see any scenario where Shakur goes in there and fights or Javante toe to toe and beats him. And the only and if he does do it, it'll be like Mel Taylor versus Chavez where. The cost in your real life is going to cost him a lot more than his purse to go in there and try that. He's going to get damaged trying to stand in there and beat a Javante. Like that's not something. Okay. That's not something you do. Shakur does not have great defense. I see somebody in your yes, no, no, no. and said that he does not be, have great defense. Been very man. critical he, about his defense recently. Yeah, he he doesn't have great defense. Great defense is when you can you can guard both hands. Shakur never has to guard both hands because as a southpaw. He cancels out the other guy's jab. When he's fighting other southpaws, he does not. He does. He doesn't know how to catch a jab. And as far as slipping, you know, he slips okay. But like I said, that guy that he ran from all crazy. It, it wasn't. He wasn't the greatest, you know, uh, offensive fighter. But it's like I said, southpaws versus southpaws. You see it. You see it real quick. Okay, so who do you believe uh, gives him the best run for his money at one thirty-five? I mean, when you say run for his money, who do I think can beat him or who do I think will have a good fight against him? I think who can beat him. Who do you believe can beat him? I don't think anybody at 135 can beat Shakur. So you don't think Lomachenko? I mean, beat, uh, not, beat, not Shakur, but uh, Javante. I don't, you don't think, think anybody. Think... Nope. You don't think Lomachenko? And why not? Lomachenko, that, that's the other end of the answer. When you said who can give him the best run for his money, is Lomachenko. But can he beat him? I don't think he can beat him. And it's the same reason. You know, Lomachenko, because here's the way he can win this fight, and it may be, you know, eke this fight out if he can get through it. Lomachenko's tough. He's experienced. He does have real defense as opposed and, to Shakur. Yeah, angles. He, he, has, he has angles, good enough pop, right, where I think that he can definitely do some things to Javante. And the thing that he has in his favor is Javante is a slow starter who will let you, you know, steal some rounds. And if if Lomo can get to the sixth round and be up, you know, or know that he's up, 
he can kind of coast his way to a victory against the Javante. Try to, hopefully he doesn't tire out and Javante can't find him. That's the only way he wins that fight. But if Javante early on lands anything devastating, and the reason I said early on is because the other thing that Lomo does not have that other guys that Javante recently fought does is the size. Yeah, Javante's not afraid of Lomo, so he's not going to wait for a Lomo. He's going to go right at Lomo early, whereas everybody else, like a Frank Martin, you know, and and and, and the guys that he's fought recently, uh, Rome, Ro, Roly Romero, those guys, those guys were bigger. So he yeah. knew I can't just walk Ryan Garcia. He's like, I can't just walk these guys down. I have to wait for them to tire out a little bit. Then I'll go get them. He's going to go right at Lomo. So I don't think he's going to give up any rounds. And if that's the case, I think he'll get Lomo out of here around seven or eight because he's eventually going to start catching him. Hold on. Okay. Can you go out and come back because your audio keeps clicking? It keeps like giving me like a really bad uh, uh, sound. All right. Hold on a second. Let me, let me see if this works. I'm going to take my headpiece. All right, hold on. I'm going to bring on my guy. Yo, you there? I hear you. I hear you, Okoye. I don't hear you no more. His phone's out. Everybody's, everybody's on the road somewhere, apparently. I don't hear you at all. Yo, Gerald, you there? What's good, my guy? Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I have my guy. Me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you now. I got my guy, Okoye, on. He'll come back in a little bit. Uh, he's the one that we're doing this event with in uh, Philadelphia. Um, my God, damn. yo, you're driving my car. I told you, I don't like when you drive my car, G. That's first and foremost. You know, I don't like when you drive my car. Hey, man. Hey. Hold on, you break it up. Hold on, G, you're breaking up bad. Hold you on. Want to talk, do you, hold on, hold on. You're breaking up really, really bad. Come over here and hold on. Hold on, you hear me? All right, there you go. There you go. Yep. Of course, it's my guy Gerald. Gerald, what's that? Um, we were just talking about Javante Davis, right? And uh basically you were talking about who could beat him or who could give him a good shot. I don't know why your, your audio is bad, G. But uh okay, no, you're good now. Now G's okay. bad. Gotcha. Let me see. G, you there? Ah, oh, you can't walk. He'll probably come back around. But um, that's Gerald McCoy. Yeah, that's my guy. That's my brother. Uh, man, I, 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 you know, I break down content for the Cowboys, right? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, what? Where? Yeah, where I, I are all these Cowboys? Oh, you're Tux man. So clearly, how are you? First of all, how are you a Cowboy fan from Philly? Seriously. Like that's all right. So I, I'm an army brat. I was born in uh, Texas, right? But I was raised here since I was five. My whole family is Philadelphia, but I was in the my mom was in the army when I was born, so I was there at that time. But uh, so I became a cowboy fan off that, you know. What I mean, plus, I liked Emmett oh, Smith growing up. I, I, I always hated the cowboys, always will. Joe's my guy, Koye, Koye, Joe McCoy. So we were talking about, you me? yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I hear you. Right. We were talking about Javante. So Javante, Javante Davis's trainer recently came out and said that Javante could figure out the shoulder roll and basically beat um, Floyd Mayweather. So a lot of people are, are going back and forth. And you're an athlete. You were doing it for years. And I, my thing is, 45 years old, inactivity to fight an elite guy is, is a tall task. And I think age is undefeated. As you got older in the NFL, you took in beatings. I've seen you carried off of the field. How difficult is it to turn it on and turn it off uh, as, as a pro athlete? But what do you think about uh, the Javante versus Floyd thing? Uh, first off, I think it's stupid. Um, Floyd, Floyd didn't fight guys in their prime when he was in his prime. So why would he fight Hank currently? Uh, well, maybe that, the fight's stupid. That, that don't even make sense. I, I, I think I, I, I would watch it. I would Yeah, totally everybody watch would watch it. That, that, we got to stop this. Here's okay. what kills me with people. Okay. If I say the fight's stupid, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. People. People have to take 
Oh man, G, you're it's breaking up in my car. Difference. Yeah, you're breaking up. Uh, okay. Uh, you said uh hold on. I got, yeah, I don't know because I'm, I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. I'll tell you this. I'd rather yeah, see that than Tyson versus me? Jake Paul. I'm going to be honest. Wait, wait, wait. Can you, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, no. Yeah, we hear you. You kind of um, okay. delayed, though, but we hear you. Why am I delayed? Okay, I don't know. It's... It's probably a stream, man. You sent me an email and I had to go to my junk file to find it. Surprise, uh, surprise. Whatever, go. So why do you think the fight is stupid? Yeah. No, I say it's stupid because the thing is, what kills me with people is people have to separate the difference in me saying the fight is stupid and whether we'll watch it. Of course, we'll, we'll watch the fight. That's not the question. The question is, what about the fight? Javante is 28, 29 years old. Floyd yeah. is 45. Floyd didn't fight a lot. He didn't fight Pacquiao in his prime when Floyd was in his prime. So why would he fight Tank now that he's far beyond his prime? It doesn't make sense. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense. So, like, the fight is stupid. It's just bickering. It's a, it, it got us on here now talking about it. It's just a way to make money and get clicks. Okay, that fight's stupid. Uh, the Tyson fight is stupid. It makes no sense. All of it's just, but to answer your question about being an athlete, uh, as you get older, you can't do what you used to do as a younger athlete as an older athlete. As far as like dietary, uh, you got to take more breaks. You got to get more rest. You just got to be more cautious with everything you do. And uh, it takes a lot more time to perform at peak level. Like you, when I was younger, I could stretch for a little bit or not stretch and just get right to it. As I got older, I have stretched a lot more, get warm, get loose. It's just, a, it's just, you have to be, yeah, you can't, can't take it as long as breaks. Like, like you gotta be done, it's gonna stop. And you're gonna lose something. So that's why people see LeBron is doing stuff year round. Regardless of what, that's why he's been able to play so long. Tom Brady, when he was on vacation, you always seen him with his helmet and shoulder pads and throwing the football or doing something. That's why he's able to play so long. That's why y'all see Floyd still doing stuff. Bruce Smith, who's the all-time sacks leader in the NFL, told me it's easier to stay in shape than get in shape. So guys who survive and last longer, uh, one, they stay healthy, but two, it's because they're in shape year-round. So... As you get older, it's extremely difficult to, you know, do it the same way like you used to. You can still do it, but consistently at a high level, like like you used to when you was younger, it's tough. It's, it's extremely tough. But how how does it affect your reflexes? Because that's my thing. When you're going to fight Javante, your reflexes are going to have to be A1. He, he, can't, be, he can't be tank because he can't – what what may – okay, it's like – um. Iverson. Okay, take Iverson for instance. Iverson was undersized, but what made Iverson, Iverson, like a lot of people don't remember, Iverson couldn't go left. His crossover was left to right. If he ever went left, he was pulled up. If he went yeah, pull up jumper, yeah. right, he was going to the goal. What made him unstoppable, what made him unstoppable was his speed and athleticism. Once that started to fade, Iverson's game became extremely normal Yeah. because of his size. Now, here's the difference. Jordan, when his athleticism started to fade, he just developed his post game. Kobe developed a post game. Most people can develop different elements in their game to where they can adjust to their athleticism. For me, it was my knowledge knowing where the ball was going to be before it got there. So get put myself in the winning position. Or it was, you know, breaking down this offense. And he can only I don't know what's going on, G. Do some different instances. In boxing? Oh, uh, he broke up. That's bad, this one. 
Okay, adding to what he's saying in terms of, and that's my thing, it's going to be, uh, hold on, you broke up really bad for a minute. The reflexes to me, and I think when you fight somebody like Javante, your reflex, and I agree, he, even when he got older, he was more in the pocket, he was defending better inside the pocket. That's right. what Floyd was doing. Right. That's a tall task to stay in front of the tank right now. Like, I, I want to see it just because I want to see Floyd to still do it. People say George Foreman did it. He said Bernard Hopkins did it. He can't, it's insane. He, can't, he can't do it because you've heard numerous boxers say, I can see what's about to happen, but my body, I can't move the way I used to. Like, I can't get out the way the way I want to. Like, Ali said it. He said, I can see all these punches coming. I just couldn't move. I couldn't dodge them. I could not get out the way. Like I seen him coming, but I just couldn't. Floyd, Floyd is one of a kind. The way he defends yeah. and what he does, but age is just man. No, other guys like I think Floyd could beat a lot of boxers right now. Tank ain't one of them. Yeah, but it's just no. Nah. I mean, I, I'm intrigued to be honest with you. I, I would like to. I think. Floyd, I think Floyd would get damn near half a billion dollars. I agree with the point. Um, the, the money, the money wise, you know, to happen if that were the case. But competition wise, Floyd, Floyd right? It's not a competitive Floyd got price. too much pride, man. Floyd got too much pride. He yeah. stayed. The, the word on the street we keep hearing is he sparred Devin Haney, and that's when he knew, okay, like I can't stick with these young guys. Yeah, like I just, you know, and that's Devin Haney. Yeah. yeah. Like imagine if he get in there with Tank. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Yeah. And Haney was just touching him up. You know he probably was taking the punches, but it's like, all right, I'm getting hit. Yeah, too you ain't gonna take that from Tank though. So yeah, you already you right. Tank, Tank touching you up. You go hit. You touching that campus. And Floyd yeah. got too much pride, man. He got too much pride. If he like Pacquiao, Pacquiao get in there. He don't care. He will just fight. Yeah, but they don't have to. They, these guys are going back and forth and back and getting disrespectful. Yeah, but so what? That's like, okay, is Clarissa Shields going to fight Layla Ali? No. no. So yeah, what? Yeah. Who cares? But, yeah. but also, Layla Ali not going to get a half a billion dollars to fight. Okay, the White <laughs> Howard and Shaq. See, that's the thing, man. Y'all be thinking all this is just money, 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 man. No, that, man, listen. No. Yeah, like, get, get in there. Yeah, for half a million dollars to get beat on? No. Half a billion, billion. I'm sorry, billion. billion. Yeah. Half Hold a on. billion dollars to get? No way. No. I believe Shakur Stevenson can give him the best run for his money at 135 or, or even Lomachenko. Okoye does not believe this at all. I think, I think that Shakur Stevenson and Tank, this is how the fight is going to go. This is just me. This is just me. Watching Shakur, that last fight, gave me my conclusion on their fight. Oh, man. Everybody wants to see it because they believe these are the two best at 135, right? Yeah. I believe, and I will watch the fight. I think it's not going to be what everybody thinks. I think it's going to be boring because Shakur is not going to sit in that pocket with Tank because that's just not the best. He, Shakur said... I study Floyd, and I'm a smart fighter. When Floyd fought Pacquiao, everybody said he ran the whole time, so the fight was boring mm -hmm. because Pacquiao's a big puncher. So if he studies Floyd and he knows he's fighting Tank and he knows Tank will put hands on him, he's going to run the whole time. Yep. And it's not that it's not like there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not going to be the fight that everybody thinks. Tank going to be trying to chase him all fight, and then Shakur going to be moving around. He's going to score a few points. And Tank is go. I think it's going to be extremely similar to T.O. and the dude he fought Super Bowl weekend. What's oh, up? It it's going to look just like that. That's all that's going to happen. I do you, you, th you, do you think that's happen. enough for Shakur to win, though, in that type of a fight? No, he's going to lose because the more the more impactful punches will come from Tank, but it's not going to be exciting. And everybody's going to be like, this is what we paid for? Yes, just like Pacquiao Floyd. Floyd was not about to get in there. And fight Pacquiao. He was going to score him to death and, and get out of there. You're making me want to see one of them. I want to see it, but I don't think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be very underwhelming. Tank is not going to knock out Shakur because Shakur is not going to give him an opportunity to. He does not. Frank Martin, Everybody, everybody's counter will be, what about Frank Martin? He tried to run. Yeah, Frank is inexperienced. He ran in the corner and didn't know what to do. Yeah. Frank said, I got in the corner and thought I had an idea what I wanted to do, and it just didn't work out. 
Shakur is going to back into the corner, and then he's going to escape. It's going to be completely different. I mean, I, I feel like, and this is just me. I mean, I, I feel like, and you said this, Tank gives away a lot of rounds, and that's something yep. you can't do against Shakur Stevenson, especially if he's going to take it to this. And I, and, I, and, I, and I think that could be a problem with Lomachenko, too. I think Lomachenko has a great chance of beating him because, A, he no. did get hit against Frank Martin. No. But Loma's a no. better offensive fighter than, than both of those guys. He's going to sleep, man. Let it go. He's going, going to sleep. Gonna... You guys are disrespecting Lomachenko. He's going to sleep. I agree. If he takes the body shots from Tank that he was taking from Painty, come on, man. Like, everybody keeps saying that fight was close. The fight, Loma won the last the last few rounds. Like he started right. to come on at the end, but the whole rest of the fight, Haney was out boxing him. He was hitting him to the body, getting out of there. Loma had great footwork and he was catching him here and there. But, right. but for the majority of the fight, it was body shots here, catch him over the top, get out, body shot, body shot. Go listen to the commentary. They like he keeps catching him to the body. If he he ha who's hit who has hit Loma the way Tank is. Nobody, no, nobody has ever hit him the way this man is gonna hit him. But you also can say the same the opposite way. Who's he fought that could be offensive like Lomachenko? You got tagged up a little bit against Frank. Your face was, Loma's a different type yeah, of but he, he, go back and listen to Tank. He told you, hey, listen, everybody think that Frank was hitting on me. This thing on my eyes because my gloves kept hitting yeah. my face. He was, he was hitting me in the gloves. He said I wasn't getting hit. I was getting he hit. He caught me a couple times, but it wasn't y'all thinking that I looked like this because he was punching me. No. no, it's because I was covering my face and I kept hitting myself. Yeah. He's not gonna fight Loma like that. No, he not. He's he not gonna have to fight Loma like that. He Loma, knows. Like I was saying, he like, knew. Like, Loma he knew not he big could, enough. Right. He knew he could walk up on Frank, let Frank tire himself out because of inexperience, and then once he get tired, I'm gonna knock him out. Loma is not going to get tired. Like Loma's right. not going to get tired. I just said he knows he can't fight Loma like this. There's, like, bottom line, man, I know we, we, we got to – when you got a guy at a certain weight that seems so dominant that you, you try to find somebody that can deal with him, right? There's nobody at 135 right now that we know of that's going to deal with Tank. Because the, the bottom line is when you look at it from a boxing IQ standpoint, Tank can actually box. Yeah. He's the box that he very has, well, man. Yeah, and the thing that he has that nobody else does, though, is an equalizer, which is that left hand. So you got to ask yourself, can you outbox Tank? Maybe, but there's, you got to be a uh -huh. high-level box. A high it's level not even boxer just his left it. hand. But can, you, his... can, but, but can you deal with one left hand from him? Nobody can. Like, you can't tell me. I don't know anybody. Not, not at 135, 140, or 147. That if you let Tank hit you, can you walk through that? Not a chance. So it, can you get through 12 rounds without getting hit clean by Tank? I don't think anybody can. So I don't think it. I don't even think it's just his left hand. I think Tank is everything. Tank's left hand, yes, that's his power punch. But Tank, think about it. When Tank was, was standing Frank up, he was hitting him with a right uppercut or a right to oh, the yeah. body. Tank no, just had pinpoint left. accuracy. And I was watching, okay, so when I before Saturday, I was like, yeah, Shakur just as fast as Tank, or he's as quick. He's not, bro. I think there's a difference in fast, quick, and explosion. Yeah. Tank is, is overly explosive. He's more explosive than T.O. He's more explosive than Loma. He's yeah. more explosive than Shakur. He's more explosive than all of these people. The only person who was equally as explosive was Ryan, but Ryan can't box. Right. And that's the difference. Right. Like, Tank really can box. Go back and watch him in Pitbull. Dude really can box. Yeah. I, I, I give, like I said before, I give my shot. I, I give T.O. the best shot. That's what I feel. I think T.O., athletic wise, can match up with him. I don't think he's as strong no. as him. Yes. I believe it's T.O. No. I think TL's I think TL's athletic, but here's the thing. This is what I'm saying. Who he okay, TO just fought Buddy, and dude was stalking TO and he tried to sit in the box with him. And right. dude touched the TO up. That's the difference. TO face after that was punches. If he looked let, like that because he was getting yeah. hit. If he Tank ain't sitting in the box with Frank with Tank doing that. That's Hell what no. I'm saying. 
Yeah. You think right. Jacob take those type of punches from Tio though? But he's not gonna have to for very long. But Tio, Tio, hey, think about it. Since Tio got back, he ain't hit been hitting people like old Tio. Who he been hitting like Tio is um he's like a you know he's an athlete that boxes. He's not a boxer. He's an athlete. Okay. Like like John Pascal was explosive and and quick twitch. John Pascal is like a Tio Fimo, and I'm not trying to disrespect Tio Fimo when I say that. I mean he's not a high IQ boxer. He's an explosive guy that, that's a front runner. He got to get you out of here in the first six rounds. If he doesn't, when he slows down, he doesn't. He he doesn't. He's not able to sit still, sit in the pocket like Gerald just said and pick shots off. He doesn't have that kind of defense. He's just an explosive guy that when he get his hands on you, he gonna get you the fuck out of here. But he got to do that in the first six rounds. And Gervonta is so smart. He understands going against a Tiafimo. I'm smaller anyway. He gonna give. He gonna let him tire himself out. And then after he's tired, he he going crack him, man. That's that's it. But like, even you know, so, we, we even like you just said, that. even like you just said, you said To got to get you out of there in the first six rounds. That's old To. He can't do that no more. Yeah, no. power hasn't translated to one forty. That's a fact. He, he he has not been To that's putting people down. So now, mm. once Tank realized that you can't hurt him, that's where the problem comes in. Right. And that's where you in trouble because there's not a person he can't hurt. Right. Like he 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 fought Pitbull and Pitbull just got like this bullet head, but that's the fight that tank also his hand was broke or his, his hand was messed up. Mm -hmm. But if you watch how he was hitting on Pitbull, that's where we seen him really have to box. And that's when I realized a hey, tank really can box. Oh no, Tank! tank I, I used to think the same, and I think Tank's IQ, the way he cuts the ring, I just feel like, in just my opinion, I feel like Tio has his best fights in his biggest moments, and I just feel like Tio is the only one that can match him athletically. Athletically, he's the only fighter yeah. that can match up with him. Hands well, question, wise, question for you. Yeah. Question for you. So, did you do you watch the? Uh, yeah, you do. This is what you do. So that was a dumb question. Forgive me. So, did you see what Shakur said? Post fight, I just got to get back in the ring and work on cutting off the ring. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. There's a lot of things that way. He's a man of a lot of okay. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, this is just me. I don't know. You know boxing more than me, mm -hmm. and I would love to ask a coach: Is cutting off the ring not something that you work on early, like footwork? Absolutely. Like you know, mm -hmm. Okay, so if you if you're if you have to get back in the gym to learn to cut off the ring right now. Like, come on, man. Like, there's a, I don't know. That, I, maybe I'm looking too much into that. But when I heard that, I said, eh, it's kind of a red flag. No, 100%. And that's a problem I have with Tiafimo as well. Doesn't cut the ring well. And he's a great offensive fighter. So that's really disappointing to actually hear that. Uh, Tank does cut the ring well. Uh, he does what a lot does, of What doesn't Tank do well? And that's not, that's not a, that's not like a, uh, you know, that's a real question. What doesn't he do? No, with? I, my biggest issue with Tank, and this is just me, I feel like his inactivity and waiting on sitting mm -hmm. on that big shot. You can lose a fight if somebody can take that shot, but most people have not been able to take that shot. That's a fact. Okay, but, so let's say he does lose a fight in that manner. Does it does it affect his stock? I don't think it does. Um, I don't know. It, it all depends because the, the a lot of people feel like he's invincible. And once you take that loss. Hey, I mean, listen. We've we've had this conversation many a times, right? Mm -hmm. And with the with the Latino fighters, it doesn't affect them. But look how people look at Errol Spence. Look how people are looking at um Devin Haney. It's a different ball game. So yeah, the Errol but I, I think people thing. are looking. Okay, if Earl and Bud had fought and he went twelve and it was split decision, nobody's looking at Earl different. Yeah, right. They're looking at Earl different because it was. Such a big like, right? It was like, come on, bro! Like, serious? Yeah. Like, yeah. you gonna lose like this? That's and then when you think like that, okay, you go back to his previous fights. Yes, he was beating guys up, but he wasn't knocking people out anymore. So now was, you put two or two together and you say, okay, he doesn't have his power anymore where he's knocking people out like he was. Yeah. Then it looks like his reaction time is a little off. Maybe he just. Maybe things are starting to wear on him, and he just, you know, Arrow. he had two major car wrecks. He's had injuries. You know, he's been out. He's had all these issues. He had the eye issue. 
he the doctor said his neurological problems. See, maybe I, it's just I gotta, time. I gotta challenge you there, Gerald, and, and this is why I gotta challenge you on that. Only reason you make a good point, but Errol Spence had had that problem when it comes to dealing with dealing with a right hand. Are guys who know how to use an educated right hand since mm -hmm. Kell Brook. Kell Brook was knocking the shit out of him at it in his prime. It's just that Kell Brook's face had already been damaged in previous fights. So he just right. broke down in that fight. Had, had Kell Brook not broken down in that fight, I think Errol would have lost the fight between those two because Kell Brook fought him. And I broke this down on my page. He fought him masterfully. And all, all I was waiting for was a guy who could fight as a southpaw with a good southpaw jab to fight Errol Spence. And I said this a year before the, the, the Terrence Crawford fight. I said, Terrence Crawford is him and Boots are the only two guys that can fight as a southpaw and use that jab and and uh, and, and, and dominate Errol Spence. So I knew that that was going to happen to him. But the, the problem is, after the car accident, everybody gives that loss to the neurological damage rather than the fact that Errol Spence never really was. And, and you look at this in Derek James' camp. Uh, Frank Martin, Errol Spence, all the guys that he trains right now, they're southpaws, you, but you see how they're doing. They fight like Mexican fighters. They, they you mean, and they're pressure fighters that just happen to be southpaws, which is a tough, that's a tough, um, that's a tough uh, problem to solve for most fighters, right? But when you when you have a southpaw that fights those guys, they all turn out the same way. When they fight a southpaw, you see that they really can't box like that. And Errol Spence was one of the same. He was fighting guys. They were able to hit him. They just couldn't really hurt him because they couldn't get enough punishment on him. Whereas when he fought Bud, Bud can fight as a southpaw. And that's why Bud came out as a southpaw from the very beginning. He never went conventional that whole fight because he knew if I put this southpaw jab on him, it ain't shit he could do. Mm. Well, I, I I I I have zero disputes with what you said. I think I was only personally speaking to because uh, Norbs had said when when the black fighters take a loss, people just jump off the bandwagon. And I was True. just speaking to mm -hmm. why I think it's like that with Earl. It's not right. that it's not that he lost once and people are like, oh, he just he's done. I'm yeah. saying the collective. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm of, sorry about that. You're right. Yeah, I, no, I no, no. You, your, that, that's lost, why they cut you off. Yeah, because your analysis lost, you're was right. perfect. Go ahead. Yeah. Do your thing. Your analysis was perfect. Everything you just said, I have zero disputes. I'm just speaking to why I feel like everybody's like, oh, Earl is done. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's a collective. You, okay, yeah. like you just said, you, you said everything you just said, which is a fact. And then he goes and he fights a guy like Bud and gets beat on like that. Everybody, yeah. like, yeah, that's. You That's know, because I think I think it's when you get when you get to a certain level, yeah. it's not like in sports where like LeBron, people are going to keep watching LeBron because it's like he's won his championships. At this point, we just enjoying him. If he have a chance to compete, great. But we just enjoying our time with LeBron while we got it. When right. you're in an individual sport and you've been at a certain level. When you stop fighting at that level where you're competing for championships, that's when people right. get up. That's what people people no longer say, like, you know, oh yeah, I'm just a fan hit. No, they wanna if you are not at the peak of competing for a belt, it's yeah. kind of like eh, it's cool. But, you know, well, it it, it to, to both your points, it depends on how you just like with a woman, right? How you get her is how you lose her, right? So if you, if mm -hmm. you get a chick and you you got her with the car. Now you ain't got no car. You might lose it because she got used to a certain lifestyle, right? It's the same thing with boxing. How you come is how you go. Because you were talking about Pacquiao. People just want to see Pacquiao fight. They yeah. don't care because Pacquiao never came and sold the idea that I'm an unbeatable fighter. I'm just right. an exciting fighter. A Toro yeah. Gotti, the later Toro Gotti, same way. Yeah. He didn't have to win. It's just you knew you were going to get excitement out of him. Most of the black fighters sell lifestyle and they sell this yep. indomitable, unbeatable Because persona. of Floyd. Right. So now they sell that. And if you sell me that and I'm a fan because I think you can't be beat and you get beat, I think the Good dopamine point. drop that you get when you watch that type of guy lose is different than if you're selling I'm a fucking warrior. If a, if a guy like uh, the back in the day, Aaron Pryors, those type of guys, or guys like Mike Tyson, don't, nobody's looking at them because they can't be beat. You're looking at them because of the type of figure and the type of uh persona that they put out there and it's just mm -hmm. too many black fighters that's putting that persona that they can't be beat 
out there. And that's why when they lose one fight, they lose everybody. But you know, it's crazy to your point too. Like that's one of the reasons I feel like a lot of the black fighters fight like that, or even like Shakur Stevenson. They don't want to take that out. Shakur Stevenson actually came out and said this. He goes, Yeah, he I feel like I that, pressure. Bro. bro. He said, If I get if if I feel like it's it's too difficult to fight, I'm just gonna put people to sleep and win the fight in a boring way. And I was just like, dog. Yeah, that's he said, amazing. he said, listen, losing in the Olympics, he said, that's the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life, and I never want to feel that ever again. He said, so I don't care about whatever. I just want to get the W. And I'm yeah. like, all right, well, okay. Yeah. That's why he's in the position he's in now. Nobody yeah. wants yeah. people walking out. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Cameron and May said it. They said, bro, you're in the entertainment business. We right. watch you for entertainment. Yes. You have to get the win, but we watch you for the entertainment. It still yeah. has to be entertaining. Right. It has to be entertaining. Like we could we could think about it. People are gonna be people. If you see two kids racing or playing one on one, we're gonna have an analysis on it. Like, oh shoot, man, that kid might have something to him. I don't know, man. That up with his footwork right. is like that's just what people do. Forget right. that. If you if Shakur wants people to stop saying what they saying, you got to get in there and fight like Tio. You know why he was like, yeah, Tio didn't perform well. This, this, and this. You know why we didn't say anything about Tio because he just got in there and fought. Yes, the dude was right. punching up, but it was a fight. It was something right. we can watch. Right. If you come right. out, you're in the fight business. Yes, I understand it's hit. Don't get hit, but. You still have to entertain. It has exactly. to be entertaining. Exactly. It's just, you know. Like, right. think about it. People talk about Floyd from, I'm going to say from probably like Canelo on. Floyd's fights wasn't exciting. Mm. Yeah, Floyd wasn't Pacquiao exciting. Pacquiao wasn't exciting. Uh, Birdo wasn't exciting. What's Birdo, right? That was his last fight. That was his, his last, last, second to last fight. Yeah, that was. Who fight? He yeah, fought uh, Berto, and then he fought, I think, McGregor. Either way, he might have been we not, we not fight. We not count Conor McGregor. I'm talking about, like, boxers. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, Andre Berto. Yeah, from, from Canelo on, you could really go down each fight and be like, mm, I mean, he won, but, eh. yeah. But yeah. Back, to your, back to your point to, about the invincibility thing, right? People critique Tank for that, too, because he didn't fight the Devin Haney's. He didn't fight the Teofimo's. He didn't right. fight the Lomas at a time. That's, that's People, different, though. That's okay. different. Because different. So, so you got to separate the two because boxing is a business, but it's also, you know, you know, it's also guys that do avoid people, right? When you look at a guy like Tank, he already has star power, meaning Absolutely. he can make a fight on his own. Those other guys like Haney, Shakur. You're right. They, Maidana was after Canelo. The Maidana yeah. fights. The after fight, the Maidana win. fights. Yes. yes. Uh, after yeah. the Maidana fights. Yes. Yeah, Maidana fights, fights, fights were, were, were exciting. You're right about that. McDonald's yes, fights the Maidana exciting. fights were sure were exciting. They it was, was exciting. after those. Yes. But, but think about it. Look what it did to Adrian Bronner. After he got smoked by Maidana, done. Yeah, but that's because he talked so heavy and he and there getting whoop, beat on. That's just, you can't do he that. He was yeah, getting beat up. That's a difference. If, if you are going to call shit out and talk crazy, you better back it up or you better yeah. die trying. That's the yeah. way it is. Like, or at least make it a fight. Like, if you get in there, you talk all that noise and y'all brawl for 12 rounds and you end up losing, it is what it that's is. That's cool. Yeah. Man, that dude was getting beat on. That's a that's completely different, bro. Yeah, you can't got, go in there and do all that and get whooped. He got kick walk, but 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 to that point earlier when you were talking about him avoiding those guys or him not fighting those guys, it's not his fault because they're trying to build up a draw or a gate to be able to even compete at that level with a tank. Tank just jumped up there because he actually is it. Yeah. The rest of them, Tiafimo's trying to prove that. Haney's trying to prove that. And Haney was on his way, but uh Ryan Garcia kind of derailed that. But uh Haney trying to prove it, and Shakur is a long way from proving that. So my, why would I fight one of those guys to give them a check and risk and risk losing to one of them? Right? Why would I fight true. one of those guys and they not even earning the stage? They haven't earned the stage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, here's here's what can I just say this about the Haney and and Ryan fight? Can yeah. yes, he got dropped, and yes, them 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 hooks was hurting him. Mm -hmm. But can we just stop acting like? Haney's just all of a sudden this trash boxer. Like, let's say he gets through 
the end of because he got caught in the seventh round closer to the end, right? And it was let's still say, the decision was still close, by the way. Let's get let's say he gets through that seventh round. Yeah. From rounds two through all the way to eight, it wasn't close. Ryan wasn't touching Haney. He was not touching him. Mm-hmm. Ryan was getting tired. He kept swinging for the fences. The problem with Haney is he got comfortable. He kept dropping his hand, and Ryan caught him. When a per- when you're fighting a person that has the great equalizer, and whether it's a hook, a right hand, something, some type of something that can equalize this fight, you have to be on your P's and Q's at all times. But it's killing me that everybody just so, oh, he's not this, and he's not that, and he not, man, the fight wasn't close <laughs> until he got caught again, and he just never recovered. You know what's crazy, G? If he, if he could have recovered, <laughs> yeah. if he could have recovered, in the eighth round, like he did in the second round, mm-hmm. the fight, we would have said, hey, listen, man, them two rounds, had Ryan had a couple more rounds like that, he could have won. If Haney could have recovered, he would have won the fight, and the decision was still close. No, That's I mean, what people I, I get what we seen. I get it. I'm not saying that Haney should have won the fight. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is we have to stop just trashing people without actually going back and evaluating what happened. Like people say, Haney can't beat this person and he can't beat that person. None of these people y'all said he can't beat don't have a Ryan Garcia left hook. No. And you know what's funny? G, prior to the fight, the day before the fight, me and you were on the show speaking about the Haney fight. And nobody yeah. had Garcia winning. In fact, nobody. people, people and, had Haney. I will give you your credit. You stood on G. Trust me on this. If you have a hook like Ryan, you have a shot. And I'm like, bro, that one hook is not going to beat a boxer like Haney. And you said, listen, all it takes is one. And that's yep. all it took was one. Yeah. yeah. One. That left yeah. hook in that seventh, he couldn't recover the rest of the fight. But but but, but yeah. that goes to my point before. When it comes to the black fighters, right? Think about this. Right. He took that loss. And that fight, if you look at the scorecards, it was actually close. Even with the knockdowns. People yeah, prior to that fight over. has Haney as the next star. PBC or uh, Eddie Hearn uh, basically had a deal worked out with him. He was going to be the next one. All of a sudden, he loses that fight, and Devin Haney is dog shit. It's crazy. Like, it, 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 well, it's, it's, it's not. It's not the losing though, Nord. Okay. Like 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 Joe said when he talked about Spence, it's how you lose. It's not yeah. the fact that you lose. It's how yeah. you do it. So yeah. get, get can't lose like that. Way Haney. It was it was hard to watch Haney get beat up like that. You kind of wanted him to stop it because of how hard he was getting hit. And yeah. that's hard to watch. Same thing with Errol Spence. So it's how you lose that makes it so that you kind of lose that luster after you lose. It's not the fact that you lose. Because there's guys that lose that you don't really you don't really give a damn to lose because it gave you an exciting fight. Yeah. And like like Pitbull, Pitbull Cruz, he lose. You still want to watch him fight. You know what I mean? Hey, listen, Even people are treating. I like watching People, Roly fight. Man, Roly listen, no. That, I'm, glad you, <laughs> I'm really glad you said goal. that. I'm glad you said that. People <laughs> are treating Devin Haney like he's Roly. Roly is trash. Devin Haney well, hold on, is hold on, hold on. trash. Don't disrespect Roly, the GOAT. Don't right. disrespect the GOAT, Roly. Oh, bro. my gosh. Man, listen. Okay, Roly, let me take Roly, it back. I give Roly credit I'm not, I'm because not a professional not a fighter, so I don't want to call right. anybody who's a pro trash. Let me take it back. Right. Roly is not up to par with the other <laughs> top fighters. Let me just say that. No, he's not. He, he's not a boxer, though. He, Roly was a judo ju- yes. guy that got yeah. into boxing. So it shows in his game. Him and Frank Martin are kind of similar to me. They got athleticism. They strong. But that's not going to carry you at the top when you fight high IQ boxers. And Roly is yeah. not that guy. And and, and that. another like people are just writing Haney off. I know people are saying like, well, he really ain't got no chin or whatever. But it's like if a person keep getting knocked down and they keep getting up, it that's depends on who. The, it depends on who the person is, yeah. whether we give him credit or not. Like, dang, dude, hey, dude, and quit. He wasn't no hoe. He kept getting hit. He just kept getting up. Like Haney kept popping up the seventh. Yes, the ref saved him. It should have been over. But after but the, the that, when he was knocked down, he kept getting back up. And let's, let's yeah, get no, that, back that, up. That's a chin. That is a chin. Yeah. The problem and he got no Haney, credit though, for it. The, the, the problem, though, is, is it's not the fact that he kept getting knocked down. It's like it's like this, Joe. You play football, right? I, I, I used to analyze. Uh, I still do analyze the Cowboys. So I was I was, I, was, I analyzed your, your film 
the year that right. you came and played for the Cowboys, right? Right before you got injured, right? And when you watch a guy, there's tells that you see in the game, right? Where you know this guy can only this, this uh particular lineman might only be able to anchor in or, or going to his right. left, or he might he might overset to his left. So I know I gotta counter that. You watching the film to understand that, right? Yeah, yeah. So you shouldn't get stopped or stonewalled by that move because you know it's coming. Let me talk about the left Haney, yeah. he watched watch Ryan Garcia and knows all he got is a left hook. So that's the one thing that you should not get beat with is the left hook. And when but you go let me, back, let me, go ahead. Let no, me no, also no. tell you this. Let me also tell you this. It's always different watching it on tape and then being out there. Oh yeah. no, that's no, that, I'm gonna tell y'all right. I'm gonna that tell y'all right, right now. I'm yeah. gonna tell y'all right now. Y'all think Lamar Jackson is fast? Y'all have no idea. Oh, y'all think Tyree Hill is fast? Y'all think Tyreek Hill is fast? Y'all have no idea. None right, of y'all right. have ever set foot out there with them. So right. you can watch tape all day, but that's why people yeah. always say yeah. it's always different when you get in there with them, right? Yeah. I mean, Devin yeah. Haney said, yeah. I underestimated what the hook was. And everybody's yeah. like, how you underestimate this one punch? Because I may feel like, oh, I know what I can do to get out the way of it. But if that hole is faster and stronger than I thought, it's like, yeah. well, God dang. Uh-huh. Yeah, it just, it, yeah. It, 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 you get in there and you have your plan, but when you're in front of some people, you like, hey man, I've had people do it to me. They come up to me, Gerald, man. Hey, listen, I knew you was fast, but dang, I know you got off the ball. That but it's always different when it's when it's actually when you're actually in there. There's but, no simu when you watch a film, there's no simulation for what's really oh, happening. 100 percent 100 percent But there still should be a plan in regards to a counter for if you are. Like, if I am over-anticipating the fact that that left hand is fast, right? Because I saw in the first round, I knew it was going to be a problem for his jab because Haney, I'm like, Haney going to have to out-jab him and out-box him. But he got countered in the first round with a left hook. So I said, well, that showed Ryan not scared of nothing Haney throwing, so he, and Haney yeah. already got caught. Mm-hmm. There was no adjustment to it. That's the problem. There was mm-hmm. nothing that says, if this hook is But it was, fast, though. That's it what I'm saying. What People saying it for? was an adjustment. But he, it was an adjustment because two through seven and a half, he wasn't getting touched. Yeah. He was clearly winning those rounds. They, yeah, those was. rounds yeah, were not close. Rounds. No, no, you, you're and right. er, you're and right. everybody was like, oh, Ryan getting tired. He's figuring Ryan out. The yeah. commentators, Hank, he's boxing beautifully. And then he yeah, got caught. True. And there it is. He that's did adjust. Yeah, he did. But he did. once you get, if you make one mistake with a guy like Ryan, and that's, that's what I'm saying about Tank. You can do whatever, but Tank has the great equalizer, which is his accuracy and his power. Yeah. Right. He has pinpoint accuracy and power. So when people get in there, and that's why Tank is such a matchup problem. One, a lot of Tank's defense is being small. Think about right. it. When he was fighting Ryan, he was it wasn't like he was just very elusive or slipping punch. He just was ducking. Yeah. He, he just, just was crouched. short. He he, he learned from Pitbull. He fought like Pitbull fought him. Just crouch and just, you know, make him punch at the top of your head. You're right. That's what I'm saying. So that's that be my that's my thing with Tank. It's not that I think Tank is invincible. He just has something like if you if you're good at this, he has something for it. And it's right. just like a, if you want right. to get in the box with him, you can't take too many of those punches. If you want to run, he ha- he's great at walking you down. So it's like right. You know that's that is people like Tank. They just hard to deal with. It's just yeah. now now if Shakur had any type of pop to his punches, I got Shakur all day. Because now when he hit Tank back, now Tank got something to think about. If right. Tio had pop on his punches, Tio got like pop. he used to, I would have Tio because now Tank got okay. The thing with Tank is he's not afraid of anybody hitting him. True. Ryan could Ryan hits hard, but he couldn't box. Ryan's not a great boxer. Pitbull, right. Pitbull, he knew he could outbox him. He didn't want to get hit by him, but he knew he could just sit there and outbox him. Uh, uh, he's not worried about Tio's power. He's not worried about Shakur's power. He wasn't worried about Frank's power. After the first few rounds, you seen him walk to the corner and say, "Oh yeah, ain't no that's his punch. His power is gone. Ain't nothing on his right. punches. It's over right. after that." Right. True. Well, somebody say that it's it's a wrap. I disagree with Tio's power though. At one thirty-five, he was putting people to sleep. I just want to put that out there. Well, you no, know, it was, but we don't know. Though, right? I'm going off. You can only go off what's happening. 
at one forty. Absolutely. When Tio's hitting people, you it's not it, you not see it like you know if a person getting hit, you can see like oh that's affecting him. Yeah. It don't matter how much Devin was scoring on Ryan, it wasn't affect. He caught him with the cleanest left hook, and right. Ryan clapped his gloves together. So I'm gonna kill you. You know that? Like, hey, nothing. <laughs> like, you <laughs> Hey, we should have known then. Oh, he owns something. Yeah, that's that kid. That, 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 that uh, powder start kicking in. He start snapping. Bro, he hit him uh, with that left foot. He said, I'm going to kill you. I said, oh, my God. He gonna that was the best part of the fight. I'm not going to lie, bro. <laughs> Did you see Devin Hades face, though? Like, he was like, dog, what just happened? Bro? <laughs> he knew it was over after that, bro. That's the well, that's, that's why they bro. tested him after that. Fight this, and we gotta test this guy. Like, Cause oh, Ryan, think man. about it. When Ryan got hit like that by Tank, he went down. When that white boy hit him, he went down. When Devin hit him, it didn't phase him. He said, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna kill you." Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Devin's face was priceless because he was just like, "Bro, I just hit him." Up. <laughs> Devin looked like <laughs> what? <laughs> uh -huh. So hey, I'm hey, hey, I got, I got, get off of here. But hey, North, get your boy, get your boy, get your people, man, get your people. Who you talking tell about? Berlanga, tell Berlanga to lead it. Oh, listen, man. Bro. You got to relax. He they inboxed me yesterday. He was mad about what I said. Don't ever compare yourself to Camacho, dog. Don't do oh. shit. Don't do that, bro. Camacho was literally an icon at the time, bro. Like, but listen, okay, if you talk about the top guys at 168, just the top. Yeah, First, no, I don't think he's a top guy. I think he's no. a name. But the top guy, who is he beating as the top guy? Who? He can't beat Caleb Plant. He can't beat Munguia. He definitely can't beat no Canelo. He can't beat Benavidez. He can't, what's the buddy that's right next to Benavidez? The dude that they saying that, um. You talking about Boo-Boo? Like the, one, the one I always forget his name, Norris. You talking about Boo-Boo? Or is Charlie? Is that his name? No, no, no. It's 168. Um, you said, uh. Oh, um. Um, oh my god, he wants to fight better Vitas. Um, yeah, ooh, but that's um, the guy I'm talking about. Nah, oh my god, I forgot his name. He got, I, he like, he's I, like forget his name. I forgot his name. Damn, what the I hell? I always forget his name, but he can't beat him either. So it's yeah. like, oh, Morel, 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 Morel. 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 It's oh, like, Morel, dog, you gotta Morel relax. You gotta relax about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morel, Morel. 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 Yeah, the Morel different too. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Who can? Who do you think? Who do you think that Berlanga can beat of the top ones? I don't. I don't think he can beat none of the Charlos. Bro, I'm gonna be honest. Be I'm be, if, if he fight uh Boo Boo, that's the dude that beat Vita's beat his he last beat, fight in 168, right? Yeah. Yeah. He can't beat him. No, he can't. He, he, yeah. no, he, bro. I watched. I went, went back and watched Berlanga his last couple. I'm like, bro, what are we talking about here? But, but right. this is what kills me about Berlanga. Is he became the number one contender after being suspended a year for biting someone and then beating some Irish guy that no one ever heard of and became the number one contender, which is absolutely yeah. absurd. Like, yeah. I can, you know, what's funny. His camp hit me last night. They were upset about what I said about the Camacho thing. I, I said, right. I was like, bro, to compare yourself to Camacho. Hey man, y'all, y'all New York Ricans can't turn on each other, man. Y'all got to stick together. <laughs> That's what they told me. That's crazy you say, man. That's, <laughs> That's what, what they told me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, nah. I don't think people yeah. understand how how New York Ricans, Camacho baby. Was. I don't think people understand. Yeah, That's offensive to me. Camacho literally was one of the greatest fighters ever. There's never been anything yeah. like that as a Puerto Rican fighter the way he fought ever to this day. Nah. Like nah. it's it's insane. Yeah, yeah like uh, it's just, it just comes. It's just like it's a respect thing, man. Like you gotta yeah. like the great you gotta earn it. You gotta earn it, but also it's just like it's like Kobe never said. Like when people would bring up him and Jordan, he said, "Hey, don't do that. Don't bring up that guy. I'm me because of him." So there is no Kobe that y'all love without him. So stop, yeah. stop doing that. Um, right. Even Tank, even Tank, and him and Floyd going back and forth. There's a level of respect where he says yeah. Floyd is Floyd, and he's always gonna be Floyd. So we're not doing a comparison of me right now versus we're not doing it, but. All these people who you can compare to these other guys, there's a level of respect. Whether you believe you're better than them or not, you yeah. still to just put yourself in the conversation of I'm like Camacho. No. What? That's insane. 
Like, and it's crazy. You said something the other day. You said you never give yourself a nickname. You earn it. And it, and that's kind you of never give thing yourself a nickname. For Somebody else got to do that. Bro, no, like, you, you haven't beat anyone at, at any at a high, at that level to where you know whatever and nobody's asking for you to fight um Canelo when we had the great Puerto Rican Mexico rivalry when we had Trinidad versus De La Hoya or, or, or Chavez versus Camacho which was the two biggest Puerto Rican Mexican fights ever people wanted to see it. they were huge fights like it was insane Trinidad and and and, and Oscar was huge Camacho and Chavez was huge. Nobody but wants that's what he's trying to push. push. That's what he's trying to push. Puerto you can't Rico do that. Mexico. You can't do that without having the Rosario and Camacho fought Rosario fight or Trinidad doing what he was doing. You can't have that without those fights. And he has yet to do that. Go fight. Go knock out Caleb Plant. We may have something to talk about. Go beat right. Munguia. But the fact that you kind of skipped the line and people know that nobody believes that you can win that fight. Hey, listen, I'm not going to lie, bro. Uh, Munguia might hurt him, man. I mean, it knocks him out. Knocks him out. So I was watching Munguia versus Canelo, and I said, "Hey, man, that dude is." M M Munguia knocks him out easily. Uh -uh. Yeah, that's. Yeah, and David Morrell knocks him out. Um, he swings for the fences, man. I don't think Caleb Plant knocks him out, but I think it's a clear victory. Caleb Plant, mark my words, knocks him out. If he 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 he, he stops him. Yeah. Caleb Plant yeah, is a you know dog. What? You know what? I'm, take, I'm not yeah, giving sure. enough credit to Caleb Plant. Yeah, he's, he's a dog. Enough. His only yeah, losses is. are to Benavidez and Canelo. Let's, let's not forget that that's yeah, a yeah. bad yeah, man. I'm bugging. I'm, yeah, I'm bugging. I am. I mean, I, I want to root the guy on because he is Puerto Rican, and I'm Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. but I cannot lie to the public. I can't. I refuse to lie and say this guy's the one. I just can't. Hey, so... So my yeah. thing is with, with what Shakur is missing, and I'm sorry I'm jumping around, but That's fine. Shakur has to look at his own card. Look at uh, what's my man that fought right before him? Um, Keyshawn, John, Keys, Keyshawn, Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn Davis, yeah. And Abdul... Abdullah Mason. Listen. Yeah, Abdullah Mason is a beast. Oh, Abdullah man. Abdullah Mason? Oh, man. The beast that is what <laughs> now that right there that is entertaining, yeah. Right, and it, it don't always have to be knockouts, but even think about it, even when we used to watch Roy Jones, yes, Roy Jones had a lot of phenomenal knockouts, but you would watch Roy Jones like the first time he fought Bernard Hopkins, yeah. He just it was when he fought uh, um, uh, James Tony, he didn't knock James mm -hmm. Tony out. But it was so exciting to watch what he was doing with his hands. He was like, he was, he was punishing him. Yeah, that's entertainment. And but, it's like but, we we understand Shakur. You're extremely talented. You're gifted, but he's missing what we're saying. There's one thing that I think Kobe Bryant said, right? Like you got to give it all on the court. You got to leave it out there, right? Yeah. Shakur is just satisfied with just. Going with his motto that the O is more important than actually entertaining and giving it your all. And I think that's what he values more than actually being great. <laughs> Did you see in your comments? What? Oh. It's, it he says, said, I'm Puerto Rican as well. We got to hope Xander is it because Berlanga not it. <laughs> yeah, it's a flag. It's a flag. I mean. I want to know who's. Listen, and I, I want to know where this confidence is coming from or this backing he says he has. Because in the interview, he said, I look on there and I got everybody against me except like two people. Okay, so where is this huge Puerto Rico backing you feel like you have? I haven't spoken to a Puerto Rican yet that says, yeah, Berlin yeah, is our next one. No, he's not, dog. Like, I, And I hate to say it, but it sucks. Like, we, we're really hoping Xander Zayas is the one. And he's at 154, which is probably the deepest division right now, which is crazy. So, so do you think at 35 right. that Abdullah? Abdullah's a beast. Because Shakur is how old? How old is Shakur? 25? I think he's th – oh, Shakur is 26, I think. Is he that he's like, old? Yeah, he's like 26. 25, 26, yeah. Okay, so do you think yeah, in the next in two years he could run into Abdullah? He might try to catch him early. I don't think he waits to 
Yeah, if he I, runs into Abdullah, I, I think he stays far away from Abdullah Mason. So that guy's a beast. I think he do, I think he do too. And, and he said, he said, listen, I'm 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 like working my way into 135. So going to 140, I don't see happening for a long time. So he gonna be there. Oh, right. Abdullah's about like 18, right, or something yeah. like that. He's 20. 20, dude, that's he's insane. Young. That's yeah, he's young. Crazy. And I remember Bro. hearing about him. It was him and his brothers were riding around in the van, uh, but maybe like in 2020, 2020, they were trying to get signed. I was uh, doing uh, fights with Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross, little Rick Ross. Uh -huh. And uh, they were trying to get him to sign him at that time. And I heard his name. I never knew who he was until he jumped on the scene. But once he jumped on the scene, he was everything advertised. Oh, no, he is. I was like, I told him, I said, you should have signed him, man. You should have yeah, signed him. You had the chance. He made, All he they wanted was a van. On. They wanted a van and a sign on bonus. I said you should have bought them that damn van and, and yeah. gave that sign on bonus. Couple, couple quick questions for both of y'all, and then I'm gonna get off here. Um, do do you think Abdullah should fight? Um, what's the kid? Um, Keyshawn. No, not Keyshawn. I was gonna ask you about Keyshawn. I was gonna say should Keyshawn fight Frank next? That'd be a good. That'd be a good win for him. I, I that think would be. That'd be an exciting. Well, fight. they got a storyline. You could sell that. Remember the run in they had. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have a story. Keyshawn, he keeps asking for the bigger fight. Uh, Frank just got a lot. It don't matter what happened to Frank. Yeah. People are interested in watching Frank now. So now, yeah. can you? Now we can make this match happen. Or does Shakur fight Frank? I think I don't, Shakur, think, I don't think Frank. Well, he sent him that offer beforehand, and he was talking all that noise. So you know, Shakur. If, I, I look at if if I'm judging Shakur, can somebody make him fight a guy like Frank? Maybe, but the the way he is in the ring, I think he's the same way when it comes to contracts outside the ring. He's going to be overly cautious right now because he does he he's in a weird position. He doesn't have fanfare, so he's he's a bad outing or a bad loss away from being like a guy that really can't really do much in the game. So I think Shakur is looking for the perfect storm. He's looking for a guy that can make him look good. And I don't think he thinks Frank Martin is that guy. Because so Frank you Martin think is a guy signs that... with, You think he signs with Floyd or Eddie Hearn? It's going to be one of the two. He's not going back to... I think he's going to go Floyd. I think he's got to go with Floyd. I think he's got to go with Floyd. Floyd knows how to move a guy that's not a, a puncher. He knows how to... He would know how to market Shakur. I think Eddie Hearn is a guy that's like, you You got to kind of already be your thing. Whatever you are, you are. Eddie Hearn is just going to put you out there and sell you. Like, Boots is Boots. He don't need Eddie Hearn to what, sell what he is. What, you know what, you, what, I mean? that, what do you think about Zepeda? Huh? What do you think about William Zepeda? What about him? I mean, we're throwing names out there. Why not Zepeda? I mean, Shakur said, said he asked for yeah. that fight. He said he asked for that fight, but he said that Oscar is trying to make get that guy a belt first before he comes to uh, Shakur because he don't want to knock smart. him off their path. Yeah. Right. Shakur but, needs a okay, guy so that's that, a flat-footed puncher in front of him. Like He need to fight a guy, honestly, like a pit bull or something like that. A guy that's yeah. not a knockout artist, but going to keep fighting, going to make you fight. Pitbull said he was gonna fight him because he didn't want to. He didn't want to chase him. That's what Pitbull said. Pitbull was like, "Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be chasing you around the whole fight." You know? That would be the best yeah, fight that's for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, boots, boots. No, not boots. Uh, Bud. If you have right. to pick a fight for Bud, let's leave the money out of it. Because obviously, the money fight is Canelo. Right. If you have to pick, I got two two people. Boots. Bud. Should he? Which one would be? The fight, boots. Him and boots, boots, or him and Canelo. I don't think boots. he beats Canelo. It's boots. I don't think he beats boots either. Like I'm about to go see boots right now. Boots is a bad <laughs> man, dog. It makes me want to be from Philly, dog. I'm gonna tell y'all a story about boots. I'm Bud serious, can't right? beat boots. Boots is dog. He's I'm a dog. You, I'm gonna tell How you. How do we listen, know? Talk to talk to. I'm gonna tell you why I say this. I'm gonna tell you why I say this. Bud is the most prolific. He's one of the most prolific offensive fighters out there. I give him that. Yeah. When you watch Bud come out in a conventional stance, when he has a guy that can jab him or out jab him like Kel Brook was doing, he gonna switch on you, right? And then he gonna come out in Southpaw next round. Boots can do that with you, but yeah. he also can defend better than Bud out of each position. Boots got styles in every style. Like he got five, six different styles as a Southpaw, 
he got like two or three of them as a conventional fighter. So he got styles inside his styles. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I think that that's going to be a lot for, for Bud to have to deal with. He never dealt with himself. Yeah. Yeah, he never dealt with himself, but also here comes experience and knowledge. Boot, Bud said, there's a lot I see that he don't know yet, and that's why I can beat him. That's what Bud said. Bud, this is Bud's words, not mine. Because yeah, I'm like, yeah, y'all clearly, clearly y'all know way more about boxing than me. I'm just based on what these guys are saying. Bud right. said, Boots is not ready. He's extremely talented. He can do everything, but there's things he doesn't know yet that I know. I, I'll tell you this. I think that's an excuse because the two biggest fights that he can make the most money from are one, Canelo, and two, Boots. And right. he's going for Canelo because he knows if you lose to Canelo, he's the bigger man. If you lose to Boots, but on the other also, man, remember, y'all both just said it. Y'all both just said it. Like, Boots is Boots, and he's got fanfare, and people love him, but different. you're taking a huge risk. And right. if he's not getting a certain amount or whatever, that's a huge risk fight to where no, that's that's, you that's the only reason I personally say Bud earned the right, just like Floyd earned the right yeah, by fighting the guys he fought to make his money on his way out, right? I, so yeah, if I'm if I'm Bud's advisor, just as an advisor, yeah, you 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 fight two, three fights that's real big money and you fight boots last or stay away from them altogether. I'm if I'm as a fan, yeah, I want to see him fight Boots now. But business wise, that would be the one of the dumbest business now, moves he can make right now. Now, I'm glad you said that because this is my final question. I already know Norb's answer. Here's my question to you: Do you think, based off what you just said, and I'm gonna have an explanation after my question, do you think that Canelo is ducking Benavidez? Yes. Okay, here's why I say he's not. <clears throat> you just said that Bud has earned his right to take these fights and then fight Boots last. Right. Canelo is getting 40, 50 uh, million, uh, oh, all no. these things of uh, fight. No, listen, okay. we're talking about business. He's yeah. getting 40, 50, whatever million dollars of fight. So if I can take a, uh, was it Eubanks Jr.? The, what's yeah. the guy they said? Yeah, you Eubanks Jr. or Berlanga. Uh, I could take uh Berlanga. I could take a uh, what's the guy we just said that uh, Morel. Mo, what's yeah, Morel. Morel. Yeah. So Morel. if I can get if I can get those three fights or even another one, and I can get forty million, fifty million, fifty million, and then fight Benavidez and go out with a bang, why not? Oh no, no, I, I feel like there. I feel like I, fighting him now. You you just asked was he ducking him? He's ducking him, but for good reason, just yeah. like. Crawford, I agree. Ducky, ah, okay. I got, I got you. I got you. This is smart you. duck. I wouldn't argue that, but he he has to duck him at this point because that's the one guy at sixty eight that could probably deal with Canelo. And he's he's uh, walking around at a heavyweight Benavidez. weight, dog. Like, but he's a big man is what you call a weight bully. Yeah. Now I now I know that because when you watch him go up to one seventy five, he ain't got that pop up there. No, he doesn't. So, he, so, do you, he, so you think he really? Because North thinks he just don't have it. Do you really think that he don't have the pop, or you really, or you believe he was injured, like you said? I don't no, no, it's no, it's not an injury. I had a bet, me and uh, me and Law Nation, uh, out of here, here Cowboy Analyst too, but me and Law Nation had a bet. We were betting on the fact that, you know, if he landed 185 punches in the fight, I was like, I don't think he gets to 185 punches because we we's gonna make money if he did, if he was under that. Because I said if he gets 185 clean punches on anybody, he gonna kill it. I, I don't think nobody survives that. Mm -hmm. But I watched. I watched. Uh, forget the uh, forget his name. Um, Goose. What's his name? Uh, the the Russian it. guy. He just. Fought. I forgot his name too. Yeah, I forgot his name. Vaz, Vazdek or something like that. He yeah, Gavazic. Gavazic. I watched Gavazic walk through two hundred clean punches, and I mean good shots, not yeah, not not like I'm slipping them and I'm getting clipped right. a little bit. I mean, you just get hit clean shots that will knock anybody else out. He just walked right through them like it was nothing. So yeah. that let me know that he don't got that power at 75. He needs to stay at 68 or go down. And, and, and to, add to, your, to add to your point, right, I agree with you 100%. He's more of a volume puncher. Even when he yeah. fought Caleb Plant, when he fought Boo Boo, he's a volume Anybody. puncher. Yeah. Canelo could put you out with one shot. He's, he, yeah. he's, he's a one-punch type of guy. And to answer your question before, Canelo and Boots are both – Ducking their situations, but it's for financial reasons, right? Yes. If 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 Bud 
takes the risk to fight but um, um boots he loses there's no canelo fight that no. 60 right. 50 million dollars go in it's off the table so he has to get that fight within the next year now canelo 100%. i mean he wants 200 million i'm getting 40 to fight Mungia. you're gonna pay me to fight this heavyweight at 168 pounds yeah, final final analysis i feel like canelo beats benavidez I think we just so. watch we just watched Benavidez fight at 175, right? Right. Everybody says he's the Mexican monster and he's a volume puncher and he does all this to beat you up. Okay. He just he just did he just did that to a 175 guy and he couldn't drop him, right? Right. We he's watched Canelo him. take 12 rounds. Okay, answer me this. Do you think that same guy could have stood in front of uh B Vaughn no. and took out the punches? No. Absolutely not. No. We watched Canelo do it. We yeah. watched Canelo take a bunch of punches and punishment for Bevo and finish the fight. Yeah. Yeah. And and he if you watch can that deal fight. with Ben of, yeah. he and Ben and B, Benavidez is not the boxer that Bevo is. No, he's not. He can beat Benavidez. He is not fighting oh, him no. for I money. Think, Everybody said ben he's Benavidez he's, is, people say he's scared to fight him. No, he's oh, not, no. man. No. No, but but think about yeah. this too. Even when Canelo fought Bivol, right? To add to that, if you watch the early fight, Bivol wasn't as aggressive as he was in the last fight. He was more conservative, catching the punches until Canelo kind of wore himself out and then took over the fight. He's not. Right. That's the respect that he had for Canelo's power. He started feeling yeah. his power, and he said, yeah. "Oh, this this guy can't really get me out of here like I thought." So he started opening up later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and and, and Benavidez better leave uh Bifo and Bitter B or however you pronounce that. He better just lead him along, man. Yeah. Lead. Mm -mm, not yeah, yet. I don't think lead he beats Bivol, and I, and that's why I think of Canelo's going to be able to sidestep Benavidez because I think Benavidez is going to go for Bivol or Better V, and he's going to lose, and Canelo's going to be like, oh, I don't have to fight him anymore. I think that's what's going to happen, and I think that's exactly what Terence Crawford is, is avoiding right now. With Bivol. Yeah. So oh, when, Boots, when Boots beat when Boots beat this boy up uh, this weekend, who who do y'all think he fight should fight next? He's going to one fifty four. He's gonna he's he's going to one fifty four. I'd like to see him fight Tim Zoo. I would love to That's see him. That's what I was gonna say. He, I would he, love he to need see a, him he needs a big fight. He needs it fast because right now Boots is so his his problem is he's so good. Nobody cares to watch. I live in Philly. I'm in Philly right now. I'm promoting a fight in Philly right now. Yep. And nobody knows that Boots is like you wouldn't think that Boots is fighting in Philly. Nobody's talking about it. Oh, it's in Philly. It's I didn't like, know that. Yeah, yeah it's so, in Philly. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in Philly, and nobody's talking about it at all. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like that's and that's not a hate on him. Like I like I say, I, I I send guys up there to spar with him and all that. I love what Boots is doing. I know his dad, all that. They cool, but he need a big fight now because he's so good that. C level fighters and B level fighters can't really compete against them. You yeah, need to fight yeah. another killer. Or Ortiz, but Ortiz, Ortiz up that's, there. What, North, that's what I was telling you. Yeah. Remember, I was telling you, like, we was talking about the face of boxing and selling and all this. And I was Mellow, telling you nice. that. Remember that week? Remember that week? Yeah. I asked, was Canelo, did people know Canelo was fighting? And somebody's like, oh, I didn't even know he's fighting this weekend. I'm like, it's not just, it's not just like, it's not it's not just um one person or whatever it's just boxing in general yeah. like people are just not in tune like they used to be and i right. think it's because of all the i'm not fighting him or i don't want to fight him oh, absolutely i can't fight him because i'm with match room and i can't fight him because i'm with top ranking right he'll just say i'll never i won't fight Shakur because of uh um, break situation in Bob Arrow. Yep. Yeah, no, because of uh what's Buddy in Houston? Um uh, oh Jay wait, Prince. What, Jay Prince. He said because of my relationship with Jay Prince and that whole situation, I won't fight, I won't never I didn't, fight. I didn't, know, I didn't know he said that. Yeah, that's what he said. I'm like, what? That's and that's why people are like, like I that's know half of it, Daryl. That's, that's what I'm saying. It. The other half of it is showtime. HBO and ESPN used to be the only three places you would look for yeah. fights, so you knew what it right. was coming. Now that it's decentralized, I I'm in boxing. I don't know who fighting where because I gotta go. I gotta go get the zone. I got ESPN. I gotta go Amazon. I gotta go over here to uh, Showtime. It's so many different places that these guys yeah. are on. I don't got time to keep up with all of it. 
You know what I mean? So that's yeah. the other end. It's decentralized too. Yeah. You need HBO back, for real, for real. Yeah, but uh, HBO felt like they took a lot of a lot of losses, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, some of these guys are asking for ridiculous. There's no man. I mean, you think about it. There's like four guys in boxing that can generate that. Or five. That okay, can top that five money. stars. Name me five. Canelo, number one. Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. Okay, take out Canelo and Tank. Give me five. Oh. Ryan Garcia. Whether you like him or not, he's a star. He going to sell. He's he's a yeah, he's a he's a star. I don't want to take it from him, but that's we we kind of iffy with that it's right me. now. But he can be one. But I'm just saying his his, his social media prowess. You gonna make money with him, basically. Yeah. So. He's I one. mean, he's a promoter, so he can tell. You, he's booking guys. He can tell you right hey, now. Benavidez is one. Benavidez was Benavidez on the undercard. Uh, he was on the undercard. Javante. Yeah, but Benavidez he chose to get on that card. Benavidez is a headline on any card he's on. Yeah. So we're talking like think about it. Think about it. I oh. just okay. If we talk about the hold best on, basketball on. players of all time, we're gonna eliminate LeBron and Jordan. We're gonna hold talk on. about everybody else. Are you disrespected Bam Rodriguez right now? Bam. Bam got, Bam got a country behind him. I didn't disrespect Bam. I asked you five. You, <laughs> you, don't, don't, like Bam. The, you don't like to mention five. the Mexican fighters. Bam is there. I asked you to mention five. But you, you did and you were oh, anyway, he's probably number one. On that anyway, list. anyway, um, bam, bam. Benavidez, Benavidez, uh, Ryan Garcia. Uh, yeah, uh, we're talking about draws, yeah. right? Pretty much followings, yeah, yeah, just like guys, yeah, Usyk, Usyk, yeah, Usyk, Usyk is, is a draw. Boots, Boots, yeah. Boots isn't really a draw yet, though, like that. But, he, just but he, he, don't he, even Boots, is a, Boots is a matchup draw, he's not a, yeah. he's not a, I show up, yeah. draw like Canelo. But the right matchup, you showing up to see Boots fight. You know what I mean? He got to have the right guy in front of him. Brian, um, Pitbull, Benavidez, Bam, and Inuit. That's what somebody I wrote. can't even give you Pitbull. Pitbull is like the junkyard dog of the game. Like, yeah. he's going to give any A-level <laughs> fighter a hell of a fight. But I think the top guys can beat him. It's just that they don't want to fight him because of how much of a problem he is. What about Tyson Fury? Is he still Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, he just makes What about Anthony Joshua? Yeah, you can end um, it with one of those two if you want it. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Both but I'll tell you this right now, Bam is on his way right now, bro. Like, Doug, did hey, you know he listen. showed me something? But that was my hey, first listen. time really analyzing him, though. But he showed me I've, something. I've watched a lot of boxes, and Norbs got me like really breaking down and analyzing boxes. I haven't watched a boxing match since I've really, really been. I'm a UFC guy, right. But I uh, love the art of boxing, just hand to hand stand up. Right. Since I've been watching, like really breaking down boxing, I have not seen a fighter that boxes like Bam. I love Bam. I love yeah. Bam. His, I would, I would his that. footwork, his the power, way he, the way he walks you in the shots. His that setup, knockout. You, you. I was about. You took the words out my mouth because he opened the door with that with that pivot. He pivoted. And yes. he stopped halfway with the pivot and came back with a body shot. Oh that my! Was, hey, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. He set that up himself because it wasn't like he was fighting the slouch. Boy was getting with him, but yeah, he just, when he pivoted off and he opened the door for him, he came back with that left to the body. And Tank, like, and, that was and Tank don't Tank don't give nobody credit. And he said they was like, "Who's your favorite fighters or who you think Bam. is the best guy right now?" He said, "Bam, bro, Bam." They talk about Bam possibly, but in, in, versus a new a new way. That bro, would they, be, like, be a they, like, they like four pounds apart, bro. They can fight. Bro, that would be crazy. Okay, you got That'd you got fun. one at one nineteen and one at one twenty two, or one twenty two and one twenty five. What what's the difference? Yeah, that that'd be fire. They Bro, can fight if anyway, that fight happens with his setups. His setups is like he's so he when he fought uh, like Scooter here, uh, uh, Scooter Schoolboy stuff. He here in Philly too. I watch him train. He got so many styles. It's crazy. When I watch okay. him fight. The only reason Inoue got him out of here is because every time Scooter overstepped with that right hand, Inoue never tried to counter it the whole fight. He right. let him do it the whole fight to get him so comfortable that when he came back off of that shot, when he threw that shot that last time, he actually when he, when he kept on throwing like a jab to the body but never coming upstairs with that. So Steph, instead of getting out of there off that jab to the body, he started standing there with a high guard because he's like, yo, he's not going to throw nothing back, so I'm going to stand on it. 
soon as he got him to stand flat footed, he came right around the side with that right hand, and it was over because he he set that shot up by waiting eight rounds to throw one punch. That's it, like it, it, that's that's serial killer level patience, man. Bro, it's it, it, that it's ridiculous. And, and and if I'm Abdullah Mason, no, not if I'm Abdullah Mason. If I'm Tank and I'm trying to build my promotion. I'm in Abdullah Mace's ear. Think about it. He he's been fighting with Shakur. Shakur's not getting him right. nowhere fighting on his cards. If Tank put hit puts his arm yeah. around Abdullah and say yeah. he's the next one, watch him and put him. If Tank yeah. has his next yeah. fight and Abdullah Mason fights on a tank fight, he's taking off, bro. Yeah, he ain't gonna he's take off. Man, that boy is 20 years old and that man corner said hey man that's enough hey stop this we're not gonna keep doing this three rounds in yeah yeah his corner was like hey nah, we tried it that ain't it nah cut this yeah. off if tank put his arm because think about it he has uh he has leonard ellaby now so yep. if tank put his arm around abdullah mason he's taking off all he needs to do is fight on the right card right Right. Now, I'm gonna make this a beast. Bam is a beast. Bro, I love G gets mad at me because I love Bam. Like I love Bam, dog. Like I no, I get wait. mad at you because you no, I get mad at you because you only use the term love for oh, Hispanic oh, fighters, oh, Latino oh, fighters. Oh, oh, that's that's you never use the term love for black fighters. Oh. Nobody else. If First of all, I told you I love boots. I love oh, I boots. I love these guys. It's like, bro, bro. why you love the bus? <laughs> My favorite, my, my, I'm going to tell you my love list. Boots Edis, Bam Rodriguez, and Abdullah Mason are the guy, three guys that I okay. love right now. Okay, I can't love argue him. with that. I, love I can't them. argue with that. But hey, I want to say that's a nice so list. So Canelo, Canelo goes without saying, though, right? Oh, yeah. Canelo's the GOAT, oh, man. Yeah. Hey, listen, love, if, you want, if you ever want to trigger Norbs, say something <laughs> negative about Canelo. Oh, listen. <laughs> That dude will not have a gun, and it a gun will appear out of nowhere. It'll just appear. If you bring up Canelo in a negative light, I, love I said, Canelo. "Hey, listen, does your wife know that you feel this way about Canelo?" <laughs> <laughs> we need to. Hey, my baby is he my baby is with him that. right now. Oh, my baby God. is with him right I now. Feel. Listen, right. he and he no North love his kids more than anything in the world. Right, but next in line after his uh, family is Canelo. It's Canelo. I'm telling you, you. I love Canelo. Now I know. Now yeah. I know. Bam, Bam is getting up there. Bam, Bam's getting up there. Like if you hear, you hear Bam. You say something about him. He'll be like, yeah, you know, he can probably can work on this, this, and this. You say Boots, he might not. You be like, I don't know, but listen, yeah. But you say Abdullah Mason, yeah, he coming up. He work on, yeah, yeah. But Canelo, man, he just his right hook. His right hook. Have you been what? I'm telling, bro. It's been, I'm t it's insane. Now, listen, anytime I text him something about Canelo and it's the slight negative, to like, I get, bro, I get five voice messages. I get ten long messages. I'm like, bro. Right. Right. All I said is this: Canelo, it might not be Canelo's birthday today, and you right. lose your. It is his birthday. What the right. heck, bro? It's we we keep having this. <laughs> we keep having this debate. He says Javante's the face over Canelo. I'm like, no way, dog. No, that's not what I said. Oh, gosh. But that's got like Canelo. Canelo I said it, Canelo is true. always the face. But okay. right now, Javante the guy, got the like, momentum. This is what this is what I said. I said there was a point where you bring up the NFL. We understand Tom Brady is Tom yeah. Brady. Yeah. But there was a point when you talked NFL, you said Odell Beckham. That was how right. the NFL worked. Yeah. It's just right. what it was. When right, they right, sit right. when they sent somebody overseas to promote the NFL when Odell was hot, they didn't send Tom Brady. They didn't send Peyton Man. They just they sent Odell Beckham because they knew right. this guy right now he got the hot hand. That's all I said about Tank. And, and, and all I said was the number beauty because it's disputing Canelo. Did you see the sellouts? Look in the stands with Tank fight. All of it, and then he goes all races. It ain't nothing but rappers and athletes. That's the only people who <laughs> Dang. Hold on. Yo, bro. He like, yeah. yes, it's the blacks. The blacks are the only. I'm like, bro, come Hold on, on. Man. Like, People don't. Yo, I told this to G. I was like, G, he doesn't even sell yeah. pay-per-views purposely to Mexico and still outdo his 
and, and outsells everyone. That's crazy. Right. That's insane. Right. Mexi- Listen, and this was my Mexico total. Mexico is the, the best market for boxing, though. Mexico That's what I'm telling you. And then, not but, only but that. He doesn't sell pay per views. Fights are free in Mexico. But think about it. It's sports, period. Black athletes are, there's so many of us yeah, absolutely. that we have right. so many to pick from. You can, It's so right. many black stars. When other ethnicities, out. especially Latinos, get one, maybe two, they, they go through the behind. roof. <laughs> they go through the roof. It's yes. ridiculous. We and that's all, that's all that's I said. Bad. And he was like, no. Nah, Tank don't sell. He said, "Watch, you'll see. Look in the crowd. It's rappers and athletes. It is rappers. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. He, he, but he do got the high hair right now. Yeah, he but, does. But I, I know what you're trying to say, Nor. Like, Canelo is like he's grandfathered and he's there. It's you know Canelo. I mean? But, but Canelo been where he's at right now. That's Tank true. is rising right now. Like uh, his trajectory right now is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Canelo's like flatlining. Like he's been where he is. He's just doing his thing." Like and, De La Hoya back in the day. Mm-hmm. De La Hoya had a name for so long. Mm-hmm. He, his name was just what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, yeah right. plenty of stars peak like Roy Jones during that time. Guys yep. that rose and fell during his era. That's but, how Tank is now. He, he's on a rise. You know what I mean? But the thing, the different, and I, I'm, I'm glad you bring up the Roy Jones situation. Roy Jones didn't have that equal when he was at his peak. Javante has a couple guys that could be considered as equal but not oh. as big. But they, oh. I, I, when he could have fought Devin when the devil was big, he could have fought. Been, no, 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 we're not doing that. No, no, Devin has never at any point been more popular than Tank. Never. No, 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 no. He's not been more popular. What I'm saying is competition wise, he's avoided those bigger fights. He could be way bigger than what he is if he would have took those fights. That's all I'm saying. He don't need. Okay, listen. Now listen. He hasn't taken those fights, and look, we're arguing. Whether he's the face of boxing and he didn't take without one of those taking, so you're arguing that. That's you know let you know. <laughs> see, see what I'm saying? You see? You see how triggered he got? You see? I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. Oh, man. He I, gets, I, I love just you. loses his mind <laughs> when, it comes, listen, when it comes. Listen, when it comes to what? Saul, I'm... he loses his mind. Oh, All man. I said is we have a debate about who's the face of boxing, and I don't know y'all listen. have to do. <laughs> When you Bro. when you go buy the new video game, Undisputed, just know who is on the cover. The face. Who will be on the cover? Who's the face? Man. It's Canelo that's Alvarez. Fact. Comes out October 11th. No, that's Who's not there? a fact. Is the face of football always the guy that's on Madden? No. Oh, this is the no. first no. boxing game that came out since like Evander Holyfield. <laughs> it's been like 20 okay. years. You don't want to be on Madden. Okay. That's like the Madden curse. You don't even want to be the face when of Fight Night, you know, When we'll Fight Night cover, was coming that's... out, okay, Midnight Kings... Remember when Midnight Kings was mm-hmm. up? I don't remember that, that was, game. Yeah, it was. I think it was Midnight King. No, Midnight. Uh, was that what it was called with Ali on the front? Knockout Kings. Knockout, Knockout Kings. Kings. Knockout, Knockout Kings. Kings. Yeah. Knockout, I don't know why I said Midnight. Knockout Kings. Ali was on those, right? It's Ali. Ali. Okay, cool. Iconic. But then when Fight Night started coming out, we had different athletes on the cover. It Who was wasn't. On the cover? The, huh? Who was on the cover of Fight Nights? I don't remember. Um, I remember uh, Bernard Hopkins was on one. He wasn't the face of boxing. No, he wasn't. No. At one point, he was up Yeah, it's not. It's being on the cover of a game don't make you the face. After like 20 yeah. years? After like 20 years of a game? Come on. Devin Booker was on the cover of 2K. Is he the face of, of NBA? No. It's difference. There's not NBA the games come out every year. NFL games come out every year. This is the first boxing game in God knows how long. Okay, so if you bring back a boxing game, think about it. When they had Knockout Kings, they had Muhammad Ali on Iconic. Because he's Muhammad yeah. Ali. Yeah. You're bringing back a boxing game. So why would anybody else other than the person who's been holding down boxing for the say, last say, 10 say, years say, be on the it? Face. Say it, say it. I want you to see it. Say it. He's... He is the. I okay, keep saying okay, okay. he is the face of boxing. I said currently though, Tank is the guy. That's all I keep saying. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nora, you you got a big vein going right through your forehead. Right <laughs> I'm now, telling bro. you, bro, it's like a goddamn <laughs> split in his hair. It's ridiculous, bro. It's, it's, uh, no, he's not lying, like Joe. He, I, I love <laughs> he's no. on the head. 
I love he gets tri- oh, it's ridiculous how triggered he gets. It's, it's crazy. the Giants and then Canelo. It's the Giants and then Canelo. That's how it is. No, no, I got, no. The Giants don't compare to Canelo. No, if I say something bad about the Giants. It's all my love. Why are you disrespecting right. my team? Come on, G. You ain't got to do that. If I say something about Canelo, right. oh, my God. Yeah. The yeah, only reason, listen, the only reason I haven't said something bad about Canelo because he's holding my baby right now, and I don't want him to squeeze right. her too tight. That's right. it. Can't worry. I, 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 I love right. Canelo, man. I got my Canelo t-shirts here. I, I, get uh, it, 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 I got the merch. I got everything. I love Canelo, man. Yeah. He's the he's the man. Yeah, he's the man. But yo, I know I'm taking too much of your time. I definitely had a good time with y'all, man. I'm gonna let y'all. All right, fellas. But I will. Uh, yo, bless you. Bless you. Yep. I don't know why I keep running into Cowboy fans. This guy talk. You play for the Cowboys, it's killing me right now. I just want to put that out there, but whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, it's, it's, it's great, it's, it's, it's great it's, energy. It's, it's great energy. If you notice, me and him, we had a lot of the same viewpoints, and a lot of our stuff was on the up and up. You, you on the other hand, you sent me the link. It wasn't working at first. Let me tell you why. It wasn't working at first. I couldn't find it. You said, gee, I sent it twice. I go look my emails, not in there. I go look in the junk folder, of course. There goes Norbs, pops up in the junk folder, and then you bring up the Giants. I mean, right. they go hand in hand. God damn. Right. I love right. the Giants. I love the Giants and Canelo. That's it. I, I don't know. I don't know how you a Giants fan, though. We're gonna talk you out of that eventually. Man. Never, never. Hey, listen, Norbs. I'm help you hey, fourth. Fourth. Fourth what? In y'all's division. Y'all will finish fourth. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I'm not gonna fourth. say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing to the season starts. Of course. The Cowboys are going to win it because I'm exactly. telling y'all now, Philly has been fig- – not Philly has been figured out. I tried telling people this on TV week five of last year. People was crowning Jalen Hurts. Okay. I oh, went thank on- you. No, listen. Oh, I went go. on a show, and the world gave me hell. I said Jalen Hurts is not elite. How's he not elite? He was run up MVP. He was this, he did, he did what he did in Super Bowl. I said, because he did it once. Before that, he had two years to show us what he could do. Nobody right. cared what Jalen Hurst was doing. He had right. one good season, and we catapulted him to the top of the league. I yep. said in week five, go check the archives. They yeah. played the a game. I said, people are figuring them out. If they can't run the ball, the offense is stagnant because Jalen Hurts cannot beat you from the pocket. He cannot beat you just standing there throwing the ball. And now that people know that, now that people are figuring out this offense. Bro, I'm going to send this to you on though. Twitter. I'm going to send this to you on Twitter, Jerry. Last year, I broke down. After the Super Bowl at that, I broke down the Super Bowl game from uh, Jalen and KC. And I said, look, yeah. he cool, but all of his plays are – one read plays, meaning he, he, one read plays. That's it. He reading the one, the first first uh, option, and then he out. He don't read the film. I said that, and I started a shit storm on Twitter last year. I'm talking about they came at me heavy. He don't. So, he and, can't and I, read defenses. He don't. The, it's back the end of the up. year. The end of the year. That's all we saw was that. Bro, you know, what I mean? so, you know the last like person said, that I, was I, like I, that. I'm happy you said that, bro. The last person that was like that, the everybody crown was Jerry Goff. And you know who exposed him? Bill Belichick in the Super Bowl in 20, 2018, in the 20, 2019 Super Bowl, 2018 season. They got in that game, and um, um, what Bill Belichick did is he didn't move or adjust anything because what happens is when we put our helmets on, when they talk to you at a certain time on the play clock, it cuts off. Yeah, they 20 can't talk to you no more. Mm-hmm. So he just waited until he knew that time tick down, then he moved. He forced Jared Goff to read to defenses read. because Jared Goff was going off that year, but it was the offense. It was one read. If it's not there, all right. The, the difference in them two is Jared Goff can't move like Jalen Hurts. So Jalen Hurts can right. run with his – but it was right. one read. If it ain't there, I'm gone. That's what was yep. happening. And it was working. Yep. What was working yep. is we had a great run game, and then off of that, we so worried about the run game. Play action comes in. If the play action ain't there, I can run. But if it's not there, just dump it off here, and that'll be our run game. And it yep. worked, and it worked, and it worked. By week five of last year, everybody said, got him. We on it. Yep. I'm, I'm okay this right now. We will bounce back this year. No, y'all one-man 
Hey, you will bounce back. Right, our hey, defense is gonna be hey. the defense is gonna be hey, up there. Hey, hey, Gotta go. Hey, Dexter <laughs> Long, sexy hey, Dexter. I love y'all. I, I I had a lot of fun. And uh, Tank is the face of boxing. I'm out. <laughs> Get out of here with that. We out of here. All right, G. All right, man, I got to go too, man. I got, I got to run too. All right, man. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. We're going to talk tonight or later, bro. Hit me up. My guy. That was the show. Great show tonight. I got to wrap up because my wife's going to kill me. It's your boy, Norris, and we are out. at the Met, Draco Boxing and RDR Promotions present Brave Hearts, Knocking Out Violence, Volume 1. Join guest ring announcer, Gilly the King and guest commentator, Wallow, for the biggest boxing event to hit Philadelphia in years. Tickets are available at Draco Boxing.